Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Blue Thunder Pod. I'm your host, Billy Sullivan, and as always, I am joined by my mom's favorite podcast host, Salt of the Earth, Dave Alinovich. Hi, Dave. Mrs. Sullivan. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I... Uh, I love that one enough. It's just going to be the thing now. I'm going to do it for every kind of sh- every kind of show that we do. It's, I it's mean, a great tagline. It's for you. factual. Yeah, what well, is? Yeah, and and the best material comes from a place of honesty. I mean, like not even a joke. My mom, like the first <laughs> podcast that we recorded and I played for, her, she was like, "You know, what my favorite thing is the little." She said Nick because she thought you were Nick. Yeah, you were, uh, Dave's brother yeah. uh, sounds exactly like him. Um, and she's like, "I love when Nick says like the little jokes kind of quietly in the background." So yeah. I was like, "That's what you like the most." Yeah, not, the, not, not like when, in our first episodes. Like I was talking like ninety five percent of the time because I didn't know how to scale it back back mm-hmm. then. Um, so I'm like, "Oh, great!" So like the only thing you didn't like basically was the vast majority of the show, which yeah. I'm talking. I mean, you got that Irish Catholic guilt for a reason. So <laughs> you just pile on, mom. <coughs> um, my mom. Oh, by the way, she, like, I, as we we're gaining some success. My mom is like, oh, maybe you can get on the radio now. And I'm like, why? So I can take a step backwards? <laughs> yeah. like, like, uh, go be an intern for 10 years and then yeah. like maybe make $20,000 a year. If we you, can get Poly Dent as an advertiser. <laughs> yeah. It's good. Like, That's, Hover around takes I mean, me where I want to go. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, so this half of our uh, now split uh, Blue Thunder pod is, is going to be uh, AW Dynamite, which uh, recording on Thursday that went down yesterday uh the third um and then the other half of our pod uh this week is rather than doing like a a, what we would normally do like a straight uh breakdown of raw and like a abbreviated breakdown of smackdown we are going to do a little special episode where we're we're, uh we're gonna preview wrestlemania uh give our our picks and what we uh, expect to happen and uh and like actually you know, keep keep record of it. <coughs> Excuse me, so that uh, we can like talk shit uh, next week when one of us is uh, is right more right about what what happens. Scoreboard. But we will, uh, you know, in the process of uh, of talking mania. Obviously, we'll be going over some of the stuff that happened this week in in WWE as well. So tune into that guy when you're done listening to this, please and thank you, um, Dave. What'd you think of Dynamite uh, this week? Um. <laughs> uh, so, like the ma- as usual, matches were fun, and the <laughs> the in between stuff, which I'm just like you're calling everything now. Like even when like when I watch like concerts, I'm like, hey, they played the songs really well, but the in between shit, like you yeah. have just embedded that in my brain forever. Yeah. Not so it's great. Important. It's very <laughs> with like everything I'm noticing. Yeah. It's like, oh, dinner was great. Well, how about the in between stuff? Like, oh, well, I didn't. And I felt the matches this week. Uh were good yeah but not aew level or great and yeah. definitely not good enough to make up for there was only a couple bad things really on the show but they were terrible things yeah. and you need great wrestling to yeah. make up for that and they had good wrestling they yes it and again that this was gonna happen you can't <laughs> fire on all cylinders all the time yeah, no, you just no. fucking can't plus if you're gonna have a stinker like mania weekends probably <laughs> the, did you uh, see mania that their week po- is probably the, the week to do it because nobody's paying no one's attention. paying attention and they're pushing collision back by like to what 10 o'clock they or should, something like, like that like push it back a month they should preempt something. it with the westminster dog <laughs> show this week <laughs> oh god remember how bad that sucked when, when you tune in like for like raw, and raw the fucking dog show comes back out? then and the goddamn dog show with a like, big like fat wimpy looking guy in a suit <laughs> running with a fluffy stupid dog yeah i just wanted stone cold to like run out onto the floor uh, astroturf and like stone cold stunner every single one of those people it was like how rich, did they never friggin- how did they never do that that's yeah, a no great idea. fucking like yeah. that's a built-in angle like no one would have seen it coming we're all just commercial bush. too for like for yeah. uh, like an attitude era commercial yeah uh, stone cold beating up dogs yeah we're like well like or well, stunnering the, the assholes that run around with the dogs and then like when him was... drinking beers and like hanging out with all the dogs that he yeah. stole from the rich assholes like, that'd be a good did i ever tell you when my dog got drunk uh, which, which dog are we talking, talking about? Talk about Turbo. All right. Yeah. Giant Rottweiler. Turbo is awesome. Uh, an awesome dog. Yeah. Giant purebred Rottweiler male. Uh, I forget either me or Nick, my brother, we were having a graduation party and there was a keg. Uh, and when people would get beer from the keg, you know, you would get those little drips that would come off yeah. the keg. Eventually, those little drips accumulated into a pool. Turbo was lapping up 
the beer because it was I, delicious. Like, I have a weird sense that I was there for you this. Were, of course you were there. Because uh, I, I don't know if it was one of my parties because I know for a fact like you guys were like the yeah. keg guys, right? So, um, but regardless, Turbo slept for two days. Yeah. <laughs> like we're like, are you alive? And he's like, I'm just having the greatest time of my life. That's but, awesome. Yeah, we got our Rottweiler <laughs> passively drunk. So Probably took quite a bit for him because he was like 200 pounds. He's a big boy. Big, monster. big boy. Um, yeah, this show was not very fun. They did some, like they peppered in like one or two things that I'm like, yes. There was a couple awesome things. Yes. Not necessarily matches. Even, a lot of like, cringy stuff yeah. and like, and they're just building. They're just like, building the dynasty. Like, okay. So, so the way the show kicked off was I think both good and cringy. It was like both of those things simultaneously. This so was. Adam Copeland comes out uh, doing his like, uh, you know, locker room leader thing. I think it's a bad idea to respond to a like interview that's outside of your company at all. But I do understand uh, why a guy like like Adam Copeland would want to come out and be like, uh, "No, AEW is awesome. Like I came here because I want to." But the thing is, everybody that was already at AEW fucking knows that it's awesome. Yeah, it it comes off kind of bad when the new guys like, "Yeah, oh no, it's okay, guys. It's awesome because." I'm saying it's awesome. Yeah. I'm Edge. Yeah. I was in WWE for a million years. So, like, it's true that it's awesome because I'm saying it. Yeah. When in truth, it's like, you know, the Bucks and, like, you know, uh, Top Flight and FTR and all these guys have been here for years are like, yeah, we fucking know. That's why we make the show the way we do. Yeah. We don't have to respond to everything that guy says. <laughs> like, and what they were responding to, in case you did not see it, is CM Punk gave an all-timer interview <laughs> on the MMA Hour with I wanted Eric. to watch it, but uh, it had a little time, and it was two hours long. Oh, yes. Um, I watched it, rewound it, wrote down as much, and we're going to cover the CM this interview that CM Punk did in the WWE episode, so if you want to ping-pong back and forth. And th- this episode probably going to be a little short for our uh, Yeah, because there's, uh, not, not, there's not much happens. to praise. But Again, it's a WrestleMania week. Uh, dynamite, yeah, so. but part of the uh, CM Punk interview is he, he goes in. I don't think he... Went in, and this is much I'll say about it now because I have a lot to say about it in the WWE episode that we do. I don't think he went in like disrespectfully. I think he said it as tastefully as he could. Uh, but I mean, he's a great I, talker on a very surface level, and we'll go dive into yeah, the yeah, under yeah. In, the, in the other one. Uh, he doesn't like AEW. Let's he, just say that. Well, but that's the thing. And uh, my biggest takeaway was just from reading parts of it was, yeah. was he contradicts himself like about a thousand times. He was he doesn't like AEW, but yeah. he also loves AEW and had a great time working there. Yeah. Both of those things were said. He yes. And also uh he like like all for workers' rights and guys being guaranteed, but guaranteed contracts also ruined wrestling. But he said <laughs> yeah. yeah. And we'll get again, we'll get into yeah, yeah, yeah. more yeah, of it yeah, yeah. down the road, but like he yeah, we'll we'll get to it more down the road. But CM Punk had a lot to say about AEW very candidly in a not kayfabe way. It was just him talking. Um, and, but like, again, that might not even been accurate because he said some things where I'm just like, are you, are you working this here? Yeah. But he's uh, always kind of working. And he, and he talks about that. Like so much to talk about. We should probably, cause now I just really want to talk about that. But anyway, Edge, there's, like I said, there's not a whole ton to talk about. Edge goes to address this. And like you said, this was not the right thing to open your show. This is like when the rock came out after Austin quit and he's like, the stone cold took his ball and went home and we're like, Whoa, yeah, that's a big, and you know what, you know what Edge big felt deal. like this? Like I guarantee he felt like he was doing the, the Moxley promo that he absolutely was not doing. Yeah. When Mox had to come out and like cut every, everybody's hurt and punk was not, like left or whatever. Another and then Moxley came yeah. out and was like, right the ship and it was like true leadership yeah one, one of the reasons i fell in love with the guy it was awesome yeah. edge definitely thought he was doing that his heart was in the right place okay. but you can't be the new guy like validating AEW. <laughs> like no everybody's just gonna roll their eyes at, yeah. at that i love what he's done i like i like adam copeland way more than i liked like the last edge run the last edge run sucked it did and, but, but like, adam copeland's pretty good like i uh, did see that he was doing an interview where like they had to severely rush everything he did him leading the judgment day was supposed to be a very long thing yeah but then who went down cody went down and then somebody else and then orton went down i thought they just decided they didn't want to just doing it no he he said like this was gonna be a slow 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 burn and he's like we need a top baby face his hair for it that's a bummer that's why he did it he, <laughs> yeah. he said uh it was actually pretty smart like and it kind of made me respect like all his decisions he's like okay if i come back and i'm gonna be a bad guy i can't do any of the things that everybody loves me for so he's like i cut my hair i changed my music i changed my gear 
And I'm like, oh, you're right. I didn't like you in this role. Yeah. Like it felt like cringy. Like he was trying to like be the like old, like the elder goth like at the Try, at Ozfest. Like, like when Ozfest? like when Becky Lynch was doing uh, like cosplay before she figured out who she was, and she was doing like. Uh, um, what's the video game? The Sony PlayStation uh, Tekken? No, no, no. She dressed up like in a like a steampunk Bioshock. The, the game where you're a lady in the future and you're shooting arrows all the time. Uh, mm. Horizon Zero Dawn. She dressed. She did Gun cosplay to, for Horizon Zero Dawn. Gun to my head, I would have never gotten. <laughs> That's that what video. Edge felt. I was like about to say Bomberman because the guy that like is been around in like working in wrestling that long. Yeah, knows who he is. So when he tries to do like too gimmicky a gimmick, it really comes off as like, oh no, you're yeah. cosplaying. It, like, it was it was tough, but yes, to to long in a very roundabout way of, of us getting there. I agree with you 100. percent His AEW run has been significantly better because he's actually doing stuff in his AEW run. And I'm ha- I am happy they were that neutering he's, like, him. Enough. He obviously asked to do this yeah. promo, and like he said, he did too. And I, I did like that he name dropped everybody, like uh, yeah. wa- all the awesome matches. I also was very amused that uh, he called Will Osprey Will Osprey yeah. three times, it's Canadian. including when yeah. uh, it's Canadian, when yeah. it, it's the name of a bird too. Like you should know that <laughs> an Osprey. Uh, <laughs> But at the tail end of his uh, promo, his like hype up AEW is awesome promo, he then like did the ring announce for the first match, which yeah. was Will Osprey. Osprey. Os- Will Osprey. Osprey. Uh, is that everybody this, else's name right? Yeah. <laughs> Will Osprey. He's got a hard time with that. Like, I can't say particularly without slowing down to a damn near halt. Yeah, but you just, I can't said, per- you just said it. Right? But I can't be like particularly. Like, that's how it comes out if I try to say uh, it conversationally. We just had, we had one, a word on the last podcast that both of us could. Oh, Winged Eagle Belt. We were both like, Winged Eagle. Winged Eagle. <laughs> Winged Eagle. I almost cut it all the way out because I was like, I, don't know, I no, hate it. We, no, we're doing we good. We both tried to yeah. repeat ourselves and it just didn't. No. It's too much like. like uh, Winged Eagle. Like, is it the uvula? Is that that, that thing? That's the ball in the there? back, yeah. Like, Winged oh, Eagle oh, 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 like, oh, 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 incorporates oh, 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 oh. that thing too much. Winged Eagle. Winged like, Eagle. It's not like you're from Pittsburgh or something. Oh, uh, by the way, that's where our biggest listenership is. So, uh, Pittsburgh, <laughs> Pittsburgh people, uh, shout, shout out. Shout out, Pittsburgh. Uh, what do they have? Uh, 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 Britsburg. We lo- they love Britt Baker on the podcast. <laughs> uh, last time, maybe not the last time, but one of the more recent times I was in Pittsburgh, I went to Picklesburg, which is mm. an entire fest where they shut down the bridge. It's next to PNC Park where the Pirates play, and it's a pickle-themed everything. There's pickle beer. There's deep-fried pickles. For some reason, there was a Back to the Future 2 accurate DeLorean with, a, awesome. with a Mr. Fusion. Uh, Pittsburgh is like a low-key, awesome town because yeah. like you think like it feels like it'd be like a jersey like east coasty but it's really like kind of midwest yeah and they have all all kinds of like art stuff yeah and like a cool community yeah uh, i'm not just saying that because we have a lot of listeners there no we're pandering uh i'll pander yeah sure yeah i love pittsburgh i will not uh like indianapolis or st louis like, sorry guys if you're uh, listening there yeah i will not be pandering to indianapolis you. has one of the best german restaurants i've ever been great to. children's museum yeah uh, as well you see we're going for different reasons yeah <laughs> um i speaking of pandering i felt that tony khan at some point goes Hey, um, hey, Edge, can you go out and? Oh no, I, this was definitely you Edge. No, this was this was like but this, Jack Reacher. I, I'm sh- watch yeah. this, kids. I'm gonna go do a thing. It screamed of Tony Khan insecurity. Like, can can, can you go out and make me? Look I agree, not insecurity, as good? and him saying like, "Sure, buddy, you can do that. You can do whatever you want." Yeah. When he should have said like. You know what, man? Let's not address if this. If we're gonna, we shouldn't address it at all. No. And if we're gonna, we should probably have one of our like, uh, you know, EVPs right. or like our one of our longtime dude guys talk the, about it. Genius! I didn't think of that. Make the Bucks bigger heels. Yeah. By they, addressing the the Buck and Big Bad in the room. They did shout out Jack Perry in this episode. Yeah. <laughs> so that, I guess, that but was, he's not coming back. Uh, no, he's in New Japan. Yeah, now. yeah. He, t- he really wants out of that contract. <laughs> uh, um, so Edge comes uh, out. Uh, Matthew well, referred to him as a scapegoat. Yes, <laughs> yeah. His, his Which is right. copyright infringement because um, he's not coming back to he's not coming back to AEW. Um, he's not. What are you talking about? Um, okay, you're stupid if you think so. <laughs> uh, Edge comes out. Asks he comes out with the TNT without the TNT title he's just coming out he's just being just being Adam yeah he comes out and he's like I'm not coming out I'm I'm just coming out here as Adam it's like even though you're you're Adam Copeland you're Adam Copeland always now. <laughs> uh, always and forever uh, asks if everybody's having fun they go woo he said oh, by the way yeah. it's a good time to mention this uh, 
see what a difference a 3,000 fans in a arena that is appropriately sized uh, sounds like compared to 4,000 fans yeah. in a much, much, much bigger arena. Because yeah. this week sounded way better. It than sounded week. better. There's a thousand fewer people there. Better camera angles. Yeah. Um, well, because you can show the hard cam size. Like, they did do it. It did look like almost like they cut it off with like black construction paper. Like, and, well, everybody, they put those tarp Which is fine. Up, which is fine. And that's also but that's what the, you do. That's the shape of that arena. It's a yes. smaller place. Those they, are they there were in, like, for that reason. They were in Worcester. Yeah. <laughs> you know? know. But they just had the lower bowl. They didn't yeah. like let people sit up there. Which like why they you don't book the United Center. Like, <laughs> Or if you, like, let's say you do, tarp off the upper bowl. Yeah. Or, and, or if that makes sense. And just... Have pe- pack as many fucking people in Te- as possible. The, like wrestling TV. That's why there's people, seat fillers. That, that stupid idea that one side should look like it's yeah. full all the way to the top. When in actuality, it just is always better if the lower yes, bowl is full. Then, yeah. The Oscars have seat fillers for a reason, right? It makes it look better when there's people there. I don't, Dave, I don't think we need to talk about everything that it says. Uh, I would like to talk about some want, things I that it says. I, uh, I, because like he, he he says some brief because I don't want, but he says some douchey stuff, uh, and I wrote down the douchey stuff. There's been a lot of negative BS that's been spewed this week. Screw that! I want to talk about positives. If you're a fan of pro wrestling, it's a great time to be a fan of pro wrestling. There's a lot of positives right now. Okay, that's all true. It's all true. Uh, he mentions WWF and the fans boo, and Edge has to remind them that the point. He's like, I'm bringing it up to celebrate this. Yeah, don't I'm, boo I'm that. Saying which that I, I watched all of these things. I did love. Yeah, I did love that he said that. He's trying to like get get rid of this tribalism shit. I love talking about all of this yeah, stuff. Yeah, and, but like booing <laughs> just the name of it right away, it it kind of disqualifies you from having a like well rounded conversation we about are this in whole a, thing. AEW, it's, you know, wrestling is always like yeah. like this. You know, ebbs and flows. Uh, and the AEW fan is feeling a little shit upon right now because for the last year it's not been great. So all the like the worst of the the you know the community of WWE people are are being pretty brutal online. Right. So I understand why their reaction would be like I get it. Uh, and these are also all like the wrestling snobs, and they're tired of hearing like this and sports entertainment people yeah. call them stupid. And they're living online. You live in an echo chamber. Yeah. You live in you're you're arguing with people you can't see, and it just yeah, that's how heart attacks happen. <laughs> yeah, well, absolutely. Yeah. It's, uh, AEW is where I need to end my career, which I'm like, oh, okay, Sting Part Two, yeah. which I don't hate. Like that's fine. Yeah, if, if they're like, they're, I look, they're, I like what they're doing with him. I like his Jack Reacher ass old guy thing yeah. much better. I hate than his what he hair. Was doing. Fucking hate his hair. Well, he should still have long hair. <laughs> Edge's hair looks like the hair you get out of a vacuum cleaner after you vacuum your rug and you yeah. have like a blonde dog and like you just put it back on. One hundred percent. It looks like a dirty <laughs> like it clump looks like of blonde. A Golden Girls or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he said, "I will put the I will put that locker room up against anybody." I can face Osprey, Omega, Hangman, Swerve, uh, Joe. Osprey. Os- excuse me. <laughs> I can face Osprey, Omega, Hangman, Swerve, Joe, Claudio, Moxley, Darby, FTR, Bucks, Buddy Matthews, uh, you put a little Brody, extra on, uh, Brody Malachi, King, huh? Brody King, Malachi Black, all <laughs> first time matches, which I'm like, that's cool. That is awesome. And he said that. He's like, yeah. isn't that awesome? Like, all yes, first time is. matches. Cold um, open, baby. This is the most Raider fun I've had. My uh, This is the most fun I have had in my entire 32 32- years in pro wrestling so i celebrate AEW. i don't fucking believe that for a second oh, i absolutely believe i it. absolutely do it's not It's not like a success but he's gets to do his like i mean it's a creative freedom thing he gets to do what he wants to do with yeah. his brother basically his, his closest friend in yes. the world because he uh, didn't get to do that at all in wwe when he was when vince was there like he everybody did what vince said like TLC, baby. There were very few. He's responsible for an yeah, entire match. Like, he pitched it. And then and they, they did it. And then and they booked it a bunch of times. Yeah. But like, in AEW, like, he, like, this is a good example. Like, if I want to go out and open the show with the with the promo defending the company, I'm, I get to do that. Okay, so are we. Re- it's really a ton more creative freedom. Well, that doesn't, that's not good for everybody. No, Being I'm, able to do no, whatever you I'm, want. We're yeah. just talking about whether Edge is having fun. And I believe he's having I'm the not, most fun in his career right now. Yeah, he's I, like a stampede guy. He likes all this, like the old school. I just can't imagine shit. playing. Dude, not everybody's happiest when they are like playing the for a hundred thousand most people. famous. It's the reason that like a lot of those people kill themselves and stuff. <laughs> like, well, yeah, yeah, it's not. You, you don't always want to be the Stones, you know. Sometimes you know, like. Sure. You want to be guided by voices. You, <laughs> like, whatever. You, but if guided by voices could sell out Soldier guns. Field, they would be the Stones. They would do that like once, but no, they would. Bob Pollard, as, as and, someone who has played shitty rooms and played big rooms, I only want to play big rooms for the rest will, of my the life. The reason I brought them up is because they specifically, like Bob Pollard, would not want to be that. He's like super artsy guy, or like the Mountain Goats would not want to do that. And I think Edge is like an old Canadian wrestling stampede guy, and at heart. 
and he's really having fun, like ble- being able to I bleed think, and shit. I now. think like, where I, I think what you're saying is accurate in so much that he has more freedom to do what he wants now, and that equates to fun. Yeah. Well, like, well okay. In that, know, I, I, in that narrow example, column, John Moxley's having way more fun than he ever had. Because his gimmick sucked, but also too. He could do whatever, th- and that's kind of the that's the thing. All right, now that we're saying it, like everybody could do whatever the fuck they want in AEW, which is kind of not working cohesively well, for a lot of guys. In like 2023, it didn't. Yeah, uh, when Tony Khan is doing his job, which he has been doing this year mostly, and when he did in 2021, you still had to pitch your stuff. He would usually give you the go ahead, and then and then you know once you were going to do it, you had a lot of freedom, one, yeah. like on the day. But you do have to pitch the stuff to him, yeah. and when it's Going extra shitty, I, and I, I suspect it's because he's got like too many things. He got too many jobs. Uh, he'll just be like, yeah, 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 mm-hmm. and that's when everything gets terrible. Um, but lately, you know, the last several months, twenty twenty four, it feels like he's been yaying and naying stuff. Right. So he does have like final say, yeah. and he's brought in veteran writers and stuff too. Um, but it's still just way more freedom. Like you don't, they don't give yes. you a script to go out and talk. Yes. Edge just went out and talked. It's and funny. As Punk said, like, some people need a script. Some people don't need a script. Some people, like, should use a script. Like, it's different. It's such case-to-case thing. For sure. So, yeah, Edge, who's been doing it for decades, yeah, I guess this is very different than what he's been doing. Yeah. So, in so much that that's fun. But that's like, that's like in a, a what's that Kevin Spacey movie? Where uh, American Beauty, where he gets a job, he's like, I want a job with no responsibility after he extorts the company and he just gets a job serving hot dogs. Like that. No, of course it is because he gets to do whatever he wants. No, prior to him killing himself. He's working his ass off, though. He's like. uh, Kevin Spacey? He's making hot dogs. No, No, Kevin Spacey's like. Probably work in the cafeteria and uh, lock up, uh, maximum security lock up, I think. Yes. Right? Um, no, I mean, Edge, it's not like this isn't like a F off job. He like he's doing like death matches and stuff. He's working harder than he did for the last five years yeah. in WWE for sure. Like it, yeah. he just loves it. You can love it. Well, he's making that's s- not the biggest thing. But he's when it's when you're being guaranteed I'd rather, stupid fucking money. Yeah, <laughs> I will do anything I want to do as but well, like, because why not? I personally like, like, like There's comedy, no- I'd rather make less money and be on the cast of It's Always Sunny than make way more money and be on the cast of, uh, you know, the Bazinga show. I would have more fun doing It's Always Sunny. Maybe. Even though it's not nearly as successful. Not maybe. Not, not even maybe. maybe. It's like, I, maybe. Dude. Maybe. 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 I, I'm just saying, I like, you're going to turn down Big Bang. Like, if... And this is where, like, money in, is not every single it is person's driving force. In in a creative, especially already millionaire, multi millionaire. That's why it's like not. Ed. They don't care about money anymore. But there are but guys it's, who it still would be should. the most fun he's had in wrestling because he has autonomy now. Sure, that's it. Yeah, that's it. That's it's not just it, but that definitely is probably that, a big that's, part of it. That's probably like, a part he gets of it. To do is like. Death match with his buddy Jay. No, I get, I, I get that he gets he to do. I get it. He like, gets to have all the matches that he wants, but I just but can't. He's also taken care of. I, I can't gel the fact that he's having more fun playing to two thousand people, giving pa- impassioned interviews to a hard side of a camera. When they turn that fucker around, there's literally nobody there. Juxtapose that to him wrestling the Undertaker at WrestleMania in a, in the a football stadium. Uh, sex balls. We have established this. <laughs> put, put, then put him in whatever WrestleMania you want. Like you also got to remember, most of his career, Vince was there. Vince is like a, he is like a the human embodiment of like an anxiety disorder. Sure. I think there are a lot of very successful wrestlers that were like never having any fun their entire times in WWF. It got way better yeah. now. Like, obviously, it's a better working condition now. But most of Edge's career was, like, under Vince, which is... I don't go think... Go back and watch some of that footage. It looked like he was abusive to everyone. Right. <laughs> like, But everybody showed up to work. Yeah, because they wanted to be on that big show. It was a big deal. Like, well, they then... wanted to please him, too. Like, because that's what, you know, megalomaniac, you know, predators do. They make you want to please them. Right. I, I, we're not going to agree on this. Uh, no, so. I, we're not. But that, it, it, I mean, and it comes down to like wh- our tastes in each individual show too. Like, uh, I would much rather be like if I get a job working in wrestling, working on AEW, even if it was like shitty twenty twenty three AEW. Yeah. I would enjoy that just much, much more. Guaranteed money to sit at home and because do nothing. Like, yeah. uh, well, no, I wouldn't be wrestling. I would be doing like a ring announcing or something probably. Yeah. Um, but uh, but I would rather just be in that. 
like I like that vibe. I like that environment. And like, yeah, it helps that Edge is rich already. But like, yeah, Darby Allen's not rich, and he's never going to go anywhere. He never got offered an AEW con- or WWE contract he, because look who would when this look one came who up. went to WWE. Like AEW is not like the land of milk and honey. They lost three <laughs> fucking monsters to WWE. And who has you know that those were specific situations? One was Jade Cody. Cody. What was Jade? Jade, Jade was a, not an AEW wrestler. Like everybody, knew that, that doesn't disqualify that I, she left. I doubt they offered her like half of what WWE did. She just didn't fit. She was not a fit for the company. Well, she, was, she, she was great, but she, she was made in that company. Be awesome. She was made in like. Uh, by her parents and hard work. She's a fitness model. No, well, she's, there's she's a, like awesome looking. No, 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 no. There's people who have awesome. Brian Cage has an awesome body. He's not. Well, a, he's not st- stunning like Jade is. Jade looks like a superhero. Well, right. And AEW put her on the map. They gave her a giant winning streak to the point where everyone, in, when she went to WWE, everybody knew who she was. Yeah, and it was like, the, I was cheering for Jade and like, I, I'm <sighs> happy that she, she like got a lot better as it went along. But, like, the general tenor amongst the, you know, AEW fan base was like, oh, yeah, Jade's doing well. And, like, we're glad that, like, she got all this exposure and people turn around on TV and, like, everybody that's not a wrestling fan is like, oh, my gosh, who's that woman? Yeah. That's a, she's amazing. But, like, it's not really working out. Like uh, It was working out very she, well. She plateaued pretty hard. And, like. Because they didn't, they gave her a, a, they didn't give her any, like, real people to wrestle. So you, you're telling me you don't think that there was a general idea amongst like the wrestling public that jade much more belonged in the wwe locker room i never said that wasn't the case that's all i'm that's saying why. is it all, wasn't like no no no. what my my base argument is edge is pitching this as like look at all these great people who have gone they they've seen the errors of evil tyrant vince's wwe well, i don't remember i was i blacked out i, don't so, <laughs> I, I think our what our fundamental uh disagreement here is and uh, we're probably not going to come to a a meeting of the minds on this one is uh, you, uh, unless you correct me if I'm hearing incorrectly, um, but you seem to like fundamentally believe that um, working in the more successful company would automatically make everyone happier, even if they were. Uh, no, not everybody, but there's, there's a trajectory where you start in a, in a gym. Oh, come on. I'm trying to pet the dog. I mean, like, Edge is a very specific situation. Sure. Okay, so look at his career. Like, you start, you're just mentioning Stampede. Then he gets into WWE. And then he's, like, headlining WWE. Then he goes away forever. He goes back to WWE. Now Which, he's just way, looking for... headlining uh, WWE under Vince pressure and yeah. also having, like, all kinds of crazy, like, yeah, but not relationship every, stuff and all kinds of personal life stuff. That's a fucking him problem. Like, yeah, but so, still, that's keep your time dick in his life where he's not ha- wouldn't be having as much fun probably. He sounded like he had a lot of fun. He was just fucking around on everybody uh, to the point where they got a guy fired over it. Um, yeah, it usually is not... Like, it's usually darker stuff inside that's making you do that kind of. Well, yes. So. so that's a very specific edge problem. Yeah, but sure. like he. Uh, but we're talking about a very specific edge right now. Yeah, <laughs> but I can't. I can't talk to his. Per, I, I'm not his therapist. I, yeah, have no I, idea. I don't know at all if he's telling the truth or not. But I can absolutely see a but, world in which he's is telling the truth. But what I'm getting at is, so like he like was constantly going up. He went away. He went back to WWE, and then he's just like, now what? Now he's just like. It's like when you're a millionaire and you're like, what even makes me happy anymore? So now he's just going off to the land of vanity projects, which is AEW, which you like you get to do whatever the fuck you want with almost no restrictions. So, yeah, it makes sense well, that mean, he's The here. restrictions are if you suck at it, you'll fail and then you'll be off TV. No, but he's a name and it doesn't matter and if he you suck at it. He did he, it right the very first couple of days or whatever, yeah. but... He's a pro, so he like was able to pivot, like, and like that probably makes it fun for him too. It's yes. a new challenge for the first time. In it's just something different years. that he hasn't done in forever. Yeah. Like, but that's that's how that's how very successful, very rich people are. They're just looking for the next thing to do, and this is he can do whatever the fuck he wants. Well, again, so I'll, going I'll back, go back to, to your, Mox making six million dollars a year, he doesn't want to do anything but work in the company that lets him. He wants to work do in Japan. Like, yeah, and yeah. like if that's going to keep him on American television, like yeah, so like. I, I think we're actually finding so yes, fucking common ground. You can, you can God, have more fun. <laughs> so you can have more fun, but it's a, you have to run the gambit of like, hey, let me headline a couple of WrestleManias well, before like, I ha- Edge, have fun. Edge did, but yeah. like a guy like Darby Allen, I think he, if I think if he was offered headlining he WrestleMania, he would have no interest. I don't think so. I know, I really do. He doesn't. Some know. people are. They I mean, don't know. Some people are just like that. 
They like did. not many. I I I, I like, like that Swerve was offered a headline. There is a he would go. There is a like, romantic idea of like yeah I'm 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 the artist I'm going to stay in an artistic yeah. medium. There's but there's not a lot of people that are not, honestly that way. But there are some people. There are some that people. Like it's, Bob Pollard of the Idea by Voices. <laughs> like, yeah, you keep mentioning them. I don't. I just I've one never of my listened to them. Bands and they're like they never rose above like like mid fame. Yeah, I saw them perform. But if they could six times, they would sell out two thousand seaters. Every time they've been, they've made like 40 albums. They've been touring yeah. for literally almost 40 years now. Um, and they have a sound that could have been like a big rock thing, like a, like a stones kind of thing, but they always like went a little bit more hard into the, like the artsy part of it specifically to not do that because they're like weirdo artist guys. Uh, maybe. Like, it, I mean, Bob Pollard just happens to be a dude. There are very, about. there are very few examples of like revolutionary musicians, hundred percent, that stay small. Yeah, voluntarily. I, mean, I, th- I like it's just. As, um, it's I can a, think of one, which is why I'm it's, saying it's a guy to my voice. But like nobody does it. Like they, everybody like gets into artistic expressions for a very specific purpose to get it out to as many people as possible. And the easiest way to do that yeah. is to constantly grow. And if we're gonna bring this back to Edge, yeah, he was constantly growing. Uh, he probably felt it in his WWE run that it was like this is shit. Let me go yeah. have. Let me go do something that's and that. Yeah, it's easy to come down the mountain when like no one likes what you're doing, and you go, "Hey, all my friends." Are it over also here. It probably matters. Like when you're lo- talking about growth, it probably also depends on how much the individual performer uh, considers like in ring performance uh, the growth of that. Yeah, because that doesn't happen in WWE. No, they, it's performance center stuff. They want them to do like all, there are people that break free of it, but like yeah. uh, like Cody doesn't do it, but uh, but. Almost everybody just has to do that performance center, like the the newer this, guys the, this, do. The, this, the, this, yeah. the, this, this, this. But like most of the television is that way, so you do not grow as a performer in that way. You do grow very much as a performer in every other way of being a professional wrestler. Yeah. But if you if you're like person like again like Moxley or uh, like even Danielson, I wouldn't say that he. I don't even think he prefers one over the other. I think he loves both. But uh, but a guy like Moxley or whatever, who they really cherish that like grinding it out and learning new things about mm-hmm. like. Uh, a new way to do a thing in the ring or doing something that he like never tried before or whatever right. in the ring. Like AEW is the place to do that. If you want to like uh, maximize and grow and learn constantly about like the television production side of it, uh, like, and that, that sounded cynical. I, I didn't mean that in a bad way either, but like uh, just being able to uh, like, to like uh, exude your charisma like yeah. not everybody can can do it. Like Will Ospreay doesn't just radiate off people. Yeah. WWE does a good job of like teaching that to people. Yeah, uh, and they can grow and learn in that way. But different people like value different things. Right. So like well, also too, they do encourage like and now more than ever now that Vince is gone, they encourage. Like when Edge left, there was literal no hard feelings. Like Triple H and Edge were both were like, yeah. "Yeah, he needs to go away Danielson and go go, like they, like, yeah. go off, do what you want to do." And like, if you want to come back, like, and then they come back as a different. Perf- I mean, the best example of this is like Lord Tensai coming back. He he, oh, I don't even Ooh. want to finish that terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that went. That, that went I was, in a direction I wasn't expecting. I was trying to stay hard in the paint, but I didn't even like that. But I mean, he I did be like Rick Rude or something. Like, no, no, no Lord Tensai, <laughs> white guy with. Uh, Samurai outfit, and yeah. Japanese writing all Absolutely. over. Absolutely. Went to Japan, came back, <laughs> and was still dog shit. But uh, no, they need to go. Yeah, and if you want to stay on American television, the only play, and you want to go abroad, the only way to do that is on AEW. Yeah. So I guess. Thank God we have a billionaire dork that likes no kind of wrestling that, yeah. that me and my <laughs> brethren like. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, just to keep wrapping this up, uh, da, da, da. he does say AEW has pushed this industry into a better place. It's given more people a chance to do what they love for a living, and that should be celebrated. I agree there. Well, that's true. He just shouldn't have talked at all. AEW <laughs> makes <laughs> pro wrestling better. This is the part that got a little choppy. This felt like oh, pandering. No, Hang on. The, 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 the next thing. AEW makes pro wrestling more fun, and AEWs were the best wrestle. Nope. I mean... It's outside n- of Gunther, yeah, it is. Nope. But, but like, nope. It's, it's not, dude. Nope. Go back and listen to our podcast and your own reviews of these, like, matches. I said they're great matches. Uh, they're all better wrestlers. <laughs> well, what is a wrestler? Like, a, like a, who can like do the more, go do the the more flippy shit? He, that's what he means, is go in there. No, like, not just flippy shit, like... Like, who can uh, talk the best? Who can present the best? He's talking about wrestling. He's talking like about the, like the in physical act bell of to bell. Yeah, 
Well, that's which subjective. Which AEW has all of the best, it's, like... It's subjective. Submission. They have the best strikers. They have the best flippy guys. They have the best, uh, uh, like... Like Osprey Takeshita hybrid guys, yeah, but they just they, have the best in ring. They have best. You can give us that. Hey, WWE has has them on I, everything else. I don't think so. They don't come close. I don't think when so. it comes to in the ring. Like, well, what's the purpose the best, of? A, hang on. What's the a good purpose? Like the purpose of a wrestler is to evoke the biggest crowd re- responses, right? Because you're doing the best job in the ring, right? For me, the purpose is to uh, make me feel. Yes, to make you feel. AEW across Roman Reigns doesn't make anybody feel. As much Ooh, as Will I, Ospreay? I love, I love Roman. Roman is one of the better in-ring performers, too. For Sammy WWE. Roman wasn't a in good like, wrestling match? Sammy's also El Generico, and that's where he but got But he's a WWE off. guy. Yeah. Uh, there's he, a couple of those. Yeah. But, like, Kevin Owens. anything from, the from like, the top, below the top third yeah. of the card of uh, any WWE show would, uh, like, get booed out of the building if they tried to do that, what they do in the ring. On well, like, it's a completely different product. On like the, the lowest rampage match. Completely different product. It's Roman's exactly. entrances are the 17 minutes great long. Wrestling, in-ring wrestling yeah. is uh, AEW is where it's at. I, I, it's think, just, it's just, it's, I think if that's your flavor, I don't agree that it's better because I don't even, like, that's totally subjective based on what you're watching wrestling for. We have one guy that's in our group chat but that's who I'm related to. That's what talking about, man. He's talking about wrestling in the ring. Then he's not even a better in-ring performer he's than... He's one of the worst in-ring performers in AEW. Yeah. Uh, so, but that's he where, recognizes that but that's where he's, the, like, looking around and but saying, he's one of their oh, my God, everyone here is but a he's goddamn their, dynamo. And he's a champion. He's their second top yeah, champion. because he's really good at all the WWE stuff, which you need. A couple of those but he's guys. not a good wrestler. They need uh, no. I didn't say he's not a good wrestler. He I said he's one of the worst on their roster. They don't have bad. Wrestlers. But by all means, <laughs> they only have good wrestlers. So hang on. So they put their title on one of their worst wrestlers because he's a f- he's a, someone that's going to draw eyeballs to a product and he's not drawing eye- eyeballs to. What's the value he's of Edge a, in this company? He's a great performer, uh, and I think he's like right, like here. He's trying to be a leader. He's not can't really pull it off like Mox, but no. like, um, but in in ring wrestling, dude, it's not. Just, there's not even like an argument to be made. I'm making arguments. Uh, I'm making several you're arguments. You're making arguments like that pro wrestling is not just about in the ring. It's not. I I agree with yeah. you there, but that's not what Edge was talking about in this promo. He right. meant like the wrestling. So who can do the, the best? That I who can do the best? Uh, tope suicida. You know that's not what what. I, how much have I talked about the in between the move stuff in the ring? Yeah. The AEW performers are just much much better at that too. Some of them are. Some like, of them. Uh, I'm talking about on average. Yeah, they are far superior to the roster uh, on all three brands of the uh, I don't and know. like I, I, you know, sure I don't you get Roman know. like okay I, like the their top guy for the last well who's years okay who's the top guy Sammy okay me let's KO. no 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 let's compare like Romans let's say top guy in WWE who's the top wrestler in AEW Will Osprey okay right now. When MJF comes back, it, it, he'll be the biggest draw because he, he adds 150 to 200,000. So Will viewers. Ospreay is a better wrestler than MJF, even though yeah. MJF had the best match of last of year. Last year, yeah. They're both incredible wrestlers and very different styles. But you, and that's my point. It's yeah. it's different. But they're both it's, in ring. like They're different. Geniuses. Yeah, so is Roman. They do. And yeah, Roman is too. Psychologically. And like. KO is, yeah. and Sami Zayn is. And so and is Drew all, McIntyre, and, like, uh, and Seth Rollins, as much Drew as I McIntyre fucking hate him. Like pretty good in the ring. He's, yeah. uh, with the right partner, he's awesome. Yeah. But, like, that's just a handful of guys. I, I think like, it's just... Captain I, Sean Dean is fucking super awesome in the ring, yeah, and he can barely get in the ring. And he <laughs> like, can get fired tomorrow, like, and no one would give a shit, because uh, he's done nothing of substance in the company. Yeah, they, uh, nope. They, they beat uh, House of Black uh, last Who, week. Yeah, but House of Black is... I do like... I know I really do like their... their I like pairing those two up and giving them a tag team because that was the right thing to do because Captain Sean Dean does not have any personality. No. We should probably keep talking about the show. Although, <laughs> he did one of my favorite... The CM Punk MJF, the greatest feud of all time. Yeah. My favorite story in the history of pro wrestling. Yeah. Uh, Captain Sean Dean was the guy that kept... Punk kept setting it up so he kept beating MJF by like shenanigan ways. Right, right. He was making MJF lose his goddamn mind. So he always have, has a place in my heart for that. And he's from Chicago. So. Yeah. Oh, okay. But like some, just, some you know, brownie points there. We can agree. Uh, perform If we just look at overall performance, like all of agree. it together. We're not going to agree. Uh, I would say they're like on equal ground. Oh, you will agree. Uh, yeah. And, but who doesn't better flippy shit? Like, I really don't like the flippy. That's that's the cornet in you because we just talked about how awesome MJF is and like ninety nine percent of his matches. I think MJF the best 
it's like him and Daniel. It's I think the guys in AEW who don't do flippy shit are the best wrestlers in the company. That's like, why you know, I you know I, who like he's known for flippy shit, but ninety five percent of his matches are like who, chain wrestling. Who? Darby Allen. No, I don't see him as a flippy <laughs> shit guy. He doesn't throw hurricane ranas and stuff, well, and that's like, like Spanish fly. Of, uh, but no, like that company's so flooded with guys that are doing top rope, who gives a shit moves, and this is going back to like the more you dilute each match with. The same shit, it doesn't mean anything in the long run. That's, That's why what, when Darby wrestles, and he, and I really don't like, oh, who the fuck was it? Um, somebody did a stun dog millionaire. I think Osprey does it now. And I'm like, don't do that. Darby does that. Like, stop it. No, stop it. Like, you, I, you do like, enough like, shit. Again, this is one we're not going to agree on. Like, I, the sanctity of individual moves, I really could not... Uh, it makes it care makes, any less about it makes this. a move set like, special. I don't care about it. Well, then everybody's interchangeable. No. Yes. Uh, they all wrestle like their own ways. Like I very much they're... recognize, but not it's just like I don't. I don't equate it to like the finisher or the, no, the not... setup move. Right. It's like the way that they do it, and and the way that they lay the match out, and the way that they attack their opponent. Like that's the thing that is defining to me of like a great AEW wrestler. Right. I don't care if everybody like uh, does. What you know outside of the two protected finishers because that's kind of cool having a couple of them. Yeah, I don't care if everybody like apes everybody else. So if mode, every match it looks different, if like, every match did a stun dog millionaire, you would feel anything by the fifth one. All of them would, none of them would look like uh, the Darby one. But that's my point. Yeah. So the Darby let one would him still be special it. because the only guy that can do it like Darby Allen is Darby Allen. But then when he did it, you'd go like four other guys just did no, this. No, I wouldn't. I'd be like, well, God I damn, would. that's an awesome stunt. I would. I, I can't <laughs> look at these matches in a vacuum. Like, you got to look at I mean, it as a whole Will show. Will Ospreay throws a hook kick. 500 million wrestlers throw a hook kick. I've never seen anybody it's, do that. It's uh, that, that hook kick? No. Your boy used to do it. Who? HBK. Not like not regularly, but he it was one. It was in his moveset. Um, what, 30, when he was doing the teardrop suplex? It might have been, but I, yeah. he definitely he was using that. But I've seen a ton of like Japanese guys and stuff use it, but I've never seen anybody do it like Will Osprey. No. It's like a different thing when yeah. he's doing it. I've seen a lot of people do rolling forearm slash elbow strikes. But they I certainly they, have never seen anybody do it like Takeshita. Like, it, right. it's yeah. just, if you're doing it, like, it doesn't matter what the thing is. It's how good you do it. <laughs> and that makes the guy that does it exceptional which is why they should exclusively have it because anyone else that does it and it looks piss poor you notice it by comparison yeah. especially when it's one match and apart you fall down the card because yes um, iron sharpens iron and it's that's and, the, and that's why the thing. company's got a bunch of dudes who are not working like captain sean dean that does the same fucking shit as He's everybody been on else TV for like the last like Re- four recently weeks. you're right you're Since right they he, put him in the tag he, team yeah. like i said it was a good booking idea yeah stick on the tag team and they did have one shock finish they had another shock finish in this thing too they which, to the quarter finals like yeah. they did good <laughs> yeah like they they need to this is the one thing i don't we'll get to the tag title tournament in a second um Really quickly, the last thing in the Edge thing, he said, AEW is moving forward, walking into the future. There's a reason Okada, Osp- how, do you, how do you say Osprey? it? Osprey. <laughs> There's a reason Okada. He pulls Okada and Takeshita, but he can't say Will Osprey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a reason Okada, Osprey, Osprey, Mercedes, and Edge, and I came here. And then he introduces Will Osprey. Like They all came for different reasons. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And then, and Every one of them yeah. came for different reasons. Um, Okada's like... Like super best buds with the the Bucks and Kenny Omega for the last like fifteen years. Yeah. It probably had something to do with it. Yeah, I, I believe Osprey did come there. I think he probably got similar offers. He came there because he knew he would be able to wrestle his style. Sure, he has. He was also working there for a while too. He was assimilated into the culture yeah. with the Forbidden and he Doors. Can watch Ricochet WWE matches. And and see go, exactly. Oh, Jesus Christ, I don't want to be that. Yeah, which <laughs> is a, a Ricochet is probably the reason ninety percent of the people go to AEW because they're like he's the best guy <laughs> he that's was ever done absolutely this. Absolutely incredible. Like, and and they his did nothing with, with him. Will Ospreay yeah. are still like mind blowing. Although I do have hope they're gonna now maybe do a little something with him. Yeah. They featured him on a show for yeah. Christ's sake. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> but that is the guy where if I was Osprey or anybody else that. Is that type of performer? I'd go. What are they doing with this guy? Yeah. Oh, they're doing that with that guy. Yes. I'm not going to that fucking Tyler company. Tyler Black sucks balls too. Yeah. <laughs> he was much better when he was like, you know, in Lucha Underground doing his Tyler Black stuff ring wise. I mean, not talking like about it. Seth Rollins. Yes. Yeah. The bane of both of our existence. Uh, well, I can't wait to talk about Raw. <laughs> yes. uh, but yeah, good, Edge promo. Uh, the, the worst thing about this promo is the show would have uh, started off with much better vibes if they just kicked it off with this as an opener yeah playing elevated and like osprey coming out and doing his osprey yeah. osprey because it was a really good match um and that would have been nice <laughs> leading out of uh is it big bang theory that comes on right before it 
Uh, yeah, I've seen the entire uh, like full series catalog of Big, ba- Big Bang Theory in six seconds intervals. So coming off of the lead in, like, yeah, let's have Osprey yeah. at the top and of like, the, the hour. Make him special. When AEW's doing what they're doing right, they kick the shows off with like the best yeah. chance ever. And Will Osprey's the best thing you could do. Yeah, this and this, this was like a cool. Like, how many different kinds of dudes is he gonna like? Show us that he just can do. He can wrestle anybody. I did like that they put. So it was Will Osprey against Will Hobbs. Powerhouse. What they called the Battle of Wills. The powerhouse, which I, like I liked. Um, I also technically am a Will. So yeah. You know. Well, why weren't you there? I'm just like Will Osprey. You should have won that match. <laughs> you could oh, throw a hook kick. I did win that match. <laughs> <laughs> At home, silently, <laughs> privately. Uh, powerhouse one is one of my favorite wrestlers too. Yes. I just he's got like the best look, and and uh, especially in the last year or so. It, like his in ring has gotten so brutal. It is, it's like Harlem Heat's 1996. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He lays it in. Um, and all my comments were just every comment for this match is just a cool move. Yeah. I just marked yeah. the move. I, I, and, I like differently performed than in any Osprey's previous matches. Yeah. Also, well, Osprey like played, he, he was on his heels a little bit. Like we haven't yeah. seen this quite as much yet. Uh, where he's he's, fighting he's really the baby bear. face fighting, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and they're both into the, the Don Callis family. So Don yeah. Callis was on commentary, which I do like that he's just like Callis is unbelievable. He's just like pitting his fucking like his uh, his teammates against each other. Yeah, oh absolutely. I think I had a Callis quotes. Oh, maybe not. Um, the opening move was Will Hobbs just pounced Osprey. Yeah, and in, like into the fucking stars. Yeah, um, that's the first thing they did. I, I used to really, really love the dude from TNA. Uh, uh, Mac? I forget his name. No. The guy who did the side sideways. Like, um, but the pounce was his thing. Yeah. He just had a great vibe. He wasn't a great wrestler, but he was like, he had a great presence. Yeah. Like, uh, oh, Monty Brown. Monty Brown. And he pounced the who shit out of people of? all the time. Um, I would love to know who I'm thinking of. Moose, maybe? No. Something Mac. Turn up uh, the Mac. At one point, Will Hobbs is like just manhandling Osprey. Uh, he walks him over to the announce table because Callis uh, uh, is there, and he just said, uh, "You signed him up for this. Yeah. You signed him up for this." Like it was, it was very real feeling. Uh, Osprey kept trying to do like his bicycle kick, and Hobbs was just like he was like bouncing off of him. Yeah, um, it was super awesome. And then when Osprey like got a little frustrated and just reared back and slapped him across the face, and then was like, "Oh fuck, what did I just do? <laughs> <laughs> like, this grizzly bear is gonna I bite my head off." I like that Callus a through line with all of these matches that Osprey has been a part of, or what Don Callis family members are fighting each other. He gets really upset when they get like too hurt. Yeah. Or like, a, well, yeah, he's like, he's all about like, uh, you know, we, we don't worry about adversity or pain or, but then every one of these, like there's one move there where somebody like, gets strapped on their head and he's like, Oh no, not that. Not that. Though. Yeah. Not that though. No. He gets quiet for a while. <laughs> not he's, that. He's just though. so great. He's like, yeah, probably our closest thing to Heenan. Yeah. He and Heenan, but you know, like closest no thing. one will be. Heenan. <laughs> no, no milk will ever be our milk. No. Uh, he did a couple cool spots. Will Hobbs has a, he does like a standing world's strongest slam to Osprey on the ring apron. His world's strongest slam is holy like, shit. I, I'm, I was a Mark Henry guy. Yeah, he hits it like five times harder. Than he like than Mark, Henry. Mark Henry just fell. Yeah, I mean he was like 500 pounds. Yeah, so it worked. Like, yeah. Osprey like just ragdolls him. It was dope. Uh, there was a uh, Will Hobbs did an avalanche power slam. Yes, which looked badass. It looked awesome. I just uh, Hobbs when he does the, when he does the world's strongest slam, it looks like uh like a YouTube video of some like. Uh, impoverished Argentinian kid killing a cat <laughs> for views. Like that's there's you know those those videos are always out there. Like some kid, punk kid who's like in super poor place, like killing animals. What is your algorithm? Uh, <laughs> I, I never actually see the videos, but I do always see like the news reports and yeah. then the people are reacting to the. And it's, it happens enough that I've seen more than one news report about right. like, like tweens. Uh, usually from like Central America, killing cats for views. Sure. And that's what it feels like I'm watching when I'm watching Will Hobbs beat the shit out of people. Are we in the wrong business? Should we not <laughs> be talking? Killing cats? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just omit pro wrestling. Um, and the other big spot I had uh, is Osprey does a Sky Twister press and he lands right on Will Hobbs' goddamn face. And I think Osprey thought that Hobbs was hurt. Yeah. Because he like... He then, when he did the immediately followed up with the hidden blade, he did not do his regular hidden blade. No, he like did it just way, way safer. It didn't look as good. Yeah, and then he t- was talking to Will Hobbs immediately, 
the fact of the matter is Will Hobbs was absolutely fine yeah. <laughs> um, because he's a grizzly bear, but he did like <laughs> leg drop across his jaw. Yeah. So that's guy's wrist press is a fucking difficult move. And Hobbs, he rolled. Oh, uh, did he move? Not the right move. Uh, not a ton. I mean, I, Osprey probably still shouldn't have like, but again, that move is like. Yeah. A lot of trust. Yeah. A lot of trust going when you're into you're doing that. like three twists both ways yeah. in the air, uh, there, there is going to be uh, like, um, uh, what's the word? Ah, not broccolini. Um, there is metallurgy, uh, like room for error. Essentially, uh, there's there. You can't really land that per- much like RVD's uh, five star frog splash. No. Never really landed perfect. Something like that. You never really can land totally perfect. No, you just gotta hope that it was amazing though that Hobbs was like back up and attacking <laughs> Osprey right after that yeah. though because it looked like he got smashed. <laughs> Yeah, I I physically recoiled when I was watching. Oh, like, oh god! I was like, I hope landed on his okay, goddamn face. I love this guy. Like, it's quite Sky Twister. Pre- this is going to be a deep movie cut reference. It reminds me of the Pamchenko from The Cutting Edge. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. Uh, which is an illegal it's a move. TV Sweeney joint, isn't yeah, it? it? Sure is, sir. <laughs> sure is. Uh, the finish was the hidden blade. Um, like a, a a very different hidden blade than what you're used to seeing. Yeah, because he was like, "Oh, bro, I hope you're not concussed, bro. You're part of the Callus family, bro. I'm gonna hit you with my elbow now, bro. <laughs> Take it, please." Uh, after the match, Callus raises both of their hands, and Hobbs just gets right in Osprey's face. Uh, Callus talks him down, and then Aubrey makes Hobbs leave like through a second exit. She's like, "No, you go that way." Yeah, which like, racist. <laughs> I was like, I don't know about that, Aubrey. Um, okay, <laughs> I don't even want to say more about it. That's the correct. Uh, yeah, that's, that's the correct that's joke. The, there, that's the punchline. Dude. Yeah, that's a good. Uh, I didn't even know you were gonna say that either. No, that was oh, fucking. That was, that was funny. Uh, <laughs> as because uh, now Hobbs has gone through the crowd, Osprey is going up the ramp, and uh, Mr. Brian Danielson walks out, mm-hmm. and they have a nice passing exchange, and yeah. it's very pleasant. It is. They're smiley afterwards. Won't be pleasant after about three minutes into the match. It's no. going to start uh, like uh, like Brett and Owen. Uh, yeah. like handshakes and we're going to do this like gentlemen and the first like get your head fucking kicked in or the first uh, like spinning elbow or uh, switch kick uh, there the violence is going to yeah. come out and then we're all in for a good time yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah. that's going to be just have a pay- just have that on the pay-per-view that's it yeah that and then Swerve and Joe they could do an hour of uh, Osprey and Danielson yeah. easily like yeah, I would be very happy to watch that I'd be, I would buy that I'm also now after this show one of the uh, few super positive things to come out of this was the look at the end now I'm totally fired up for Swerve and Joe yes based on the end of the show yes but, um, he, uh, the reason Danielson was coming out here was because it's actually kind of an old uh, WWE booking trick They'll if they have two big stars that are going to face off on a pay per view, mm-hmm. they will put them back to back in like a similar challenge type of challenge. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, Danielson got Lance Archer in uh, who absolutely he, fantastic match, and uh, Danielson fought on Collision, and I I've been protesting this for a long time. No, you you know you won me over. I don't want him on Collision. I don't want him on Rampage. But you can put him on Dynamite in like yes. special matches like this. Yeah, I, I yeah, you're right. I don't need to see him like rolling around with no. Miller Yuta the, anymore. The, <laughs> like, the yeah. only upside of the Collision Six Man is he was he was in it and then he was out of it. Yeah, like he, he doesn't. He get wasn't really a big part of it. Like, and I'm okay with if he's got like if there's like a really young wrestler that he feels like he could do a lot with. Yeah, give him a match like, but do that on Dynamite and make it feel big for the make young it a guys showcase. Too. Yeah, yes, nobody's fucking watching yes. Collision, especially this weekend because we will be watching. Everybody's going to be watching like uh, Mania. Like, yeah. like uh, uh, Will Ospreay is going to be watching WrestleMania. <laughs> you know, like Tony Khan's going to be watching WrestleMania like, from the commentary. They're going to have like an iPad going. But, it's uh, WrestleMania. But Danielson was across from Lance Archer in yeah. that six man. So when they mm-hmm. did this as one on one, I'm like. Okay, I don't hate this. And, and it was just it doing was, random ass matches. Like it was a these, cool like uh, matching matchup of styles. With yeah, Lance Archer. He's so brutal. I I did have the, my biggest thought of this, uh, and I've had similar thoughts, but it was really distilled in this one. If Lance Archer had been given 
even one of the five opportunities that Wardlow has been given in his time with AEW, he would be a upper mid Carter. He's still, absolutely. He's still good. He's still believable every time he wrestles a match, yeah. even though he loses all the time. Yeah. So imagine if he was offered that brass ring that they keep trying to give to Wardlow. Yeah. He would have grabbed that motherfucker. And he wouldn't have cut his hair to look like a douchey kid that goes to the gym at five o'clock. He's, he, I think that's like the J- Japanese thing. They like weird stuff like that. And he's the biggest and he makes his most money in Japan, I think. Are we talking about Lance Archer yeah, still? Yeah. No, his hair's still. Oh, Because oh, okay. Wardlow okay. cut his hair off to look. Like dude. No, I love his hair. No, no, Wardlow looks like a toddler. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's ridiculous. He looks looking ridiculous. For, where's my binky, Adam Cole? But like Arch- if, if he starts bitching about his booking ever again, Tony Khan just needs to keep an eight by ten picture of Lance Archer Archer and just hold it up and yeah. show him this guy. You yeah. know what he would have done with the shit that I gave you? Yeah. Like, do you think Lance Archer would have had a nothing match against Samoa Joe a couple yeah. weeks ago? Oh, they, oh that would have been fun. Would have been like a banger that we were gushing over on yeah. the podcast. Like, yeah, that would have been fun. Yeah. Because this match was fun. And Ar- Archer got a lot in. Yeah, he did. It, this was a, he, he's a, monster. he's a believable monster. It was a pretty unbalanced squash for a yeah. majority of the match. I mean, in the previous match, Hobbs got more offense in, too. Yes. And like, well, that's a mirrored thing. It was cool. It's how, you, it. how you make a strong heel and a, and a, yeah. and a baby face in peril. Like, that, that's what they did. And Danielson finally... Like he he turns on his Bret Hart diesel bring like he starts attacking yeah. the left leg and he fucking stays on the left leg. Uh, there was a point where they were outside and Lance Archer picked up a crew member and slammed him onto. Oh yeah, Danielson. he's great. <laughs> he seems totally unhinged. Like he could injure a fan. I never or saw something. that before. <laughs> yeah. He just found he just staff. light somebody on fire or something. <laughs> like that's what makes it great. Yeah, but Danielson like the working on. I when I was a teenager and I used to hate actual wrestling. I uh, just liked all the pageantry. Yeah. Um. I used to just constantly bitch about, oh, he's working a leg, which, uh, you know, a lot of guys work a leg. It's, oh, they put you in a knee bar 40 times in a match. Yeah. No, Danielson, like, attacks your leg yes. in 800 different ways. Yeah. Like, it's amazing the number of moves that that dude, like, remembers. Yeah. Let alone can perform perfectly. Yeah. And this is why, hmm. and now, that, like, I've said it ad nauseum, yeah. Uh, this is why I want him special. Yeah. Because he does shit so differently than everybody else. Oh, you know what? It's Bret Hart, HBK, Osprey, and, and Danielson. That's oh. what that's what they are. Yeah, like, you're not wrong. Like, that's a good analogy. The, like Osprey's got the charisma, the crazy athleticism in yeah. the ring. Like the it brings all the emotion to it. And Danielson got the I do everything perfect. Yeah. Uh, and I know everything about pro wrestling. Absolutely. Oh, I like that analogy. Yeah. Ooh. Uh-huh. I just on it right now. Yeah. Look at that. The power of ad libbing. Oh, that list you sent. You sent. Would you have kept uh, Hitman at the top? Depends what we're measuring. Yeah. So I found a list from Bleacher Report, I think it was, yeah. and it was the top. What was the title? Who of just it? lost their their exclusive deal with AEW because it was their pay per view so shitty. Oh, is that why? Yeah, they're letting fight do it in America, and they're also putting it on YouTube. Like their is their pre- like their streaming is bad or their app sucks ass. And like it good? cut out during pay per views and stuff a bunch of times. So the. Uh, the thing I sent to the group, it's uh, Bleacher Report has ranked the 50 greatest WWE superstars of all time. Uh, 10 down to 1, 10 Hulk Hogan, 9 Roddy Piper, 8 Shawn Michaels, 7 The Rock, 6 Bruno San Martino, 5 John Cena, 4 The Undertaker, 3 Macho Man Randy Savage, 2 Stone Cold Steve Austin, number 1 Bret Hart. Bret Hart. Which like I don't know what the fucking measure is. I don't understand on. what they're doing here. Like no. If I was judging greatness of WWE, you guys, I might... Uh, and I'm going to make this list tonight, by the way. <laughs> uh, the, the metric I would use for WWE you had uh, nice, greatness uh, is one third. Definitions, yeah. One third in ring, one third promos, one third angles, like acting and, and you know, your body charisma in doing your angles. Bret Hart so might third, win that. third, third, third. He might win uh, that. Like, he was a good promo, but not the greatest. No. Heel Bret uh, was dope. But he was like 100 out of 100 in the ring. Yeah. So and he carried himself awesome. Oh, you're going to wait like, these now. But like oh, if, I like that. Uh, you, you, so yeah, you give a score to each one of those things and they're each worth one third. Yeah. My AEW slash now I have to uh, like include like 1996 and before WCW because I would do it the same way for them. Right. I would do 80% in ring. Yeah. And then, uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I did 60, 70% in ring and then split the, the remaining 30, 15% promo, 15% like, uh, angle stuff. This is for AEW. For saying. AEW slash yeah. WCW before they yeah. fucking Wait, sunk their ship. What is it? Six, 60, uh, what is it? 70, 30, 15, 15? 70 in the ring. And Fif- then you take that remaining 30, split that in half and that, gotcha. that gets promos and, uh, and angles. Look at you. And, uh. You're going to be busy tonight. Oh Yeah. <laughs> I love the passion. It's not, it's not busy when uh, when it's fun. No, <laughs> no, it certainly is not. 
do the job you uh, love love going to every day, and it's never you'll never work a day. So in we're your doing life. right now. Man. We're doing it right now. Start making enough money to um, pay the bills. Uh, Danielson's primarily just kicking and chopping the shit out of Lance Archer. He did kick Lance Archer just squat in the head as hard as he could. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's uh, that Japanese, go ahead and hit me as hard as you want. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Which I still don't get, but hey, wrestling. Uh, Lance Archer is about to do his old school yeah. move, and then like he falls. Even the one that's much, much better than the under. 100%. <laughs> and Danielson trips him up, and... Archer lands. Not only does he land on his left knee, but his foot gets caught under the middle rope too. I'm like, yeah. I don't know if that was on purpose, but if looked that great. it looked, <laughs> I'm like, okay, this guy. Would, and when he fell off the rope, he was clearly in pain, but he wasn't in the like, ah, my leg. He was in the like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Did I tear yeah, something? Yeah, like, like the how, Adam Cole losing all the color in his face when he jumped is, off the stage, which thing. is how <laughs> you legitimately would yeah. react to that. Yeah, usually when you get really badly hurt, you don't scream. You get stuff. really quiet. You go like. Uh, uh, you kind of feel sick to your stomach, and you're like, oh, no. Yeah. What is this? This I, doesn't feel like anything else. Just So hopefully he's okay. This match fucking ruled. Yes, it did. Uh, <laughs> from, like, top to bottom, I, mean, I, I loved it. it was there my, is a reason that Lance Archer has historically been the first uh, title defense that every AEW champion has had since the inception oh, of yeah, AEW. Look at that. He's, like, that first guy because yeah. he always gives everybody fucking awesome matches. It's so It was so good. It was so good, and, like, <laughs> and yeah. Meanwhile, um, I got to still listen to people... Complaining that Wardlow hasn't been given good booking. No. Lance awesome. Archer has not been given good booking. Let him yes. have one of these And things. now look, like, at, like, look at their attitudes, yeah, too. Yes. Wardlow's been given the fucking moon. <laughs> really, he has. Yeah, and he's like, crying about it all the time. It, Archer's been given nothing, nothing, and he comes out and like is just consistently Kills killing like, every match. He convinces everyone that he's, that he's a dangerous killer at the beginning of every match, yes. despite him losing every match. Yes. Uh, and then like puts on a clinic Yes, in like, every one of them. He's just awesome. I feel like I should be doing this every time I agree with you. Big on the yes chance, by the way. Yeah. He is just like, fuck it, we're doing that. Uh, the finish of this was Danielson. Three round cow, three round cow, three round house kicks to the head, uh, Busaiko knee, and then yes chance galore. Yeah. Uh, to I do the- like that he's been bringing back to you. I mean, I, do, I also like that like the first time he did it was that MJF one because that was so freaking perfect. Yeah. But like Danielson's like, I feel like he exists in like this liminal state of like, he could just show up on SmackDown one day. Like, he, he like is friendly with everyone. Yeah. And just, it's okay that he crosses over his stuff. I don't care. Mm. He'll sometimes call himself Daniel Bryan still. Yeah. Like, he just doesn't care about any of the war, nonsense, right. tribalism, like, any of it. He's above it all. And that's that's <laughs> the guy I want at the helm of this company. Yeah, and I think, I, I really do think he's going Insanely to. Insanely good wrestler. Right. Ignore the tribalism. He seems very interested in doing it. And Tony Khan has outright said... Uh, if I had to pick anybody to run my company, it would be Brian Danielson. Yeah. <laughs> so like, and, and, and he keeps proving it correctly yeah. time and time again. Um, he yeah, the best. Dope fucking match. But it's hard to say because Will Ospreay exists too. Much like it was hard to say Bret Hart was the best when Shawn Michaels existed too. Be, uh, and vice versa. Yeah. <laughs> like, what a time to be alive. Great time to be a pro What a time fan, to be dude. alive. <laughs> and we get The Rock doing the, the greatest stuff. work of his career. <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't even wrestle the match. CM Punk doing two-hour, like, abrasive interviews. Yeah. It's awesome. It's <laughs> great. <laughs> but the, 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 the cherry on top is we still get to hear from Chris Jericho. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, yeah, we do. The, the next segment on ramp was... So, Dave, yep. I have a question for you. Yeah, yeah. The maybe I'm an idiot and I've been using this this phrase wrong my whole life. Um, but uh, what is your definition of calling somebody out? Calling somebody out is when I'm having some sort of uh, disagreement with them that they are not responding to necessarily, or I disagree with them so hard where I have to say, "Hey, I publicly would like, yeah, like to address." Yeah, I would like to publicly address why I disagree with you, and that might lead to verbal or physical. So not me. That's exactly my definition too. <laughs> uh, I don't know what Chris Jericho thinks a call out is, no. but uh, he announced that he was going to call out Hook yeah. on Dynamite, and um, the, uh, I don't know what it was. That well, he did, 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 like, uh, they must have argued, right? They uh, argued about something? Did they fight? They must they, have fought like, about they something. Fought, they, they argued less than they did the previous week, which wasn't even an argument. It was just Hook had a one throwaway line where he was like, I don't totally trust you because you're Chris Jericho. It was the closest they came to yeah. any kind of a disagreement. Uh, you're not wrong. Hook sounded great. Hook is getting better on the mic every week. He sounded like his dad. Yes. Here. I was like, oh, you got that now. Slow burn this son of a bitch forever. Yeah. So yeah. He's so young. Yeah. Uh, 
and like still needs to work on the working punches, but like, but he's so young. He's got the charisma. He can talk yeah. like his daddy now. His I think throws are insane. I think that's the big thing. He's got the charisma and he's got the pedigree. Yeah. And if he's he got Taz's mic, yeah. then Christ, yeah, the sky's the limit. Yeah, I mean it's one of the greatest of all time. I just really want him to start doing the beat me if you can survive if I let yeah, you. I, mean, I like the fir- the first time he does it, let him do it. Like get get him in a real world title program in like four years. Yeah, and just drop that out of nowhere, and then just let him win the title. Like yeah. I can't let him. Like, like, of course, he has to. <laughs> Uh, so Renee is at the top of the ramp with, I just wrote Y2J because I'm not typing out oh, Jericho. He's Lionheart now. Haven't you seen? He's got his Lionheart little pants, pants on and he comes out to Lionheart music. I don't know what he's doing. I have no, no idea what he's doing here. Midlife crisis, my man. Well, my only hope is that like, because he hasn't, he hasn't done this before. So even though it's confusing as hell, at least it's not the bullshit he was doing for the last couple of years. Yeah. I, but I'm very confused. I yeah. have no idea what he's going no, for. No, no. Especially <clears throat> after we watched, if you have not watched this week's episode of Turnbuckle Time Machine. Oh, wait, it's not going to come out until Monday. Yeah. We're dropping this, it. it's, oh, I should announce that, by the way, here. it's. Uh, I think I mentioned it on one of the other podcasts, but uh, oh, yeah, our, our everyday drop for uh, um, Turnbuckle Time Machine is going to be Monday mornings. Friday mornings for our these regular podcasts, Monday mornings for Turnbuckle Time Machine, just yeah. to give you guys like a, a regular schedule. But sorry, continue. No, you're not, uh, that was necessary. Uh, so people know. They call it housekeeping. And a little, the, little the bit biz. of housekeeping. That's fine. <laughs> Before we start, we're going to do a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, please turn on your, your Zoom video so we could see your bright and shining faces. Fourth week in a row, no Moxley, by the way. Good. I, I agree. Beat As it. a fan. Beat it. I Go agree. on vacation. Oh, you said he's wrestling in like Mexico, right? Up. Yeah. Yeah, his vacation is like a tack match in uh, yeah. like... I, uh, uh, what's that? Like blood sports yeah. promotion. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, or like, yeah, he went to CMLL to do like a flaming tables match, but that's vacation for him. As long as he gets a Bahama mama, then he's on vacation. Yeah. yeah. He could drink 75 hey, Bahama mamas. Of that white dude at the CMLL show, uh, when the female, uh, Lucha Mm-mm. performer, uh, like they, it's more sexualized there. It's just something that is like, okay. And expected yeah. like with the fans even and a Lucha, uh, lady, like did a flip out outside of the ring. She landed in the guy's lap and then kind of, or in his girlfriend's lap. And then she kind of did like a little mini lap dance. Yeah. And the guy slapped her on the bus. Uh-huh. The only white guy in the entire 15,000 feet <laughs> arena. And she turned around and hit him, uh, like slapped him open hand harder than I've ever seen somebody open hand slap someone in my life. Made like Rick Rude's open hand slap look uh, like the one that rocked through on the stage. And what did you think Cody. was going to happen? It was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so big dork slaps her and he goes, big dorky, ha ha ha, turns and whap. It was great. Well, he, she sent him to heaven before she sent him <laughs> to hell. <laughs> um, so Y2J, because uh, again, I wrote Y2J because it's, it's, it's just, just shorthand. Hey, Jericho uh, recounts from last week that he offered to be Hook's mentor and he wants to clarify something with Hook. Don't know why we needed his recounting of that. No, um. <laughs> no. Video package, which they also did, yeah. which would have. Uh, so uh, Hook comes out um, and Jericho says, hit the Hook signal. Like it's a bad signal. Shut the fuck up. It's like his stupid fist bump. He's taking a cool young thing and he's making it suck. Hit, hit the hook because signal. He's old and lame, and it's he says dumb. it in a way that now I'm like, oh, I liked that. Yeah, Jericho. Hit the hook Stop signal. Ruining things. I hate him. It's cool because you don't acknowledge it. You just do it. Yeah. And then he comes out, and everybody's like, oh, especially it's that so crowd. It's cool. You don't say it on TV. Yes. You stupid idiot. Especially catering to your dork crowd. Yeah, nerdy crowd. Yeah. They're like, oh, nerd is the correct awesome. word, not dork. Yeah. But yeah, like they're all into comic books and shit. It's like, holy yeah. fuck, they're, they got, you know, we've made our point. Yeah. Um, Jericho said, um, Jericho's like, uh, Hook said he would love some advice, but he knows who Y2J is. Jericho says he gets that anyone that's ever aligned with him or teamed with him ends up in a fight. And he quotes his own fucking song. He goes, everyone I've ever loved, <laughs> I've pushed them all away. <laughs> like, you dork. Uh, he said the reason. Why is he talking like Jim Morrison now, by the way? He's like. <laughs> Uh, everyone I've ever loved. Uh, like his, his old demeanor is yeah. like, yeah, yeah. You mean Lionheart Jim Morrison? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the reason for that is uh, Jericho goes, when you play the game at the highest of levels, like Chris Jericho does, the rules yeah, are different. It it's over. true. Always. And once you understand that hook, you're going to understand what I'm trying to teach you. I'm not asking you to trust me 100% right now, but I am asking you to believe in me as much as I believe in you. That's the same thing he said. Believe and trust are pretty... Pretty, yeah, pretty close. Pretty <laughs> close cousins. It's also the same thing that he said last week. Yeah. 
But he no, but he said he wants to clarify some things. Well, I want to clarify he by added, repeating myself. He added fucking nothing. It's yeah. Uh, when and the my crowd... wife and I have arguments. That's how she clarifies things. <laughs> she just repeats the same thing at me. Uh, yeah, hoping times, until I am forced to raise my voice, and then she wins the fight yeah. because I raise my voice. Well, that's. I mean, it's, she's playing <laughs> chess. You're playing checkers, oh, buddy. <laughs> Uh, crap. I mean, there's a doctor before her name. Yeah, not mine. Yeah, <laughs> Doctor Billy Sullivan. Yeah, I mean Doctor Tom doctor Pritchard of wasn't podcast. We can make you every a doctor. wrestling doctor is Ben bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> like, uh, well, dude, except I, for Britt Baker. Shout out Pittsburgh. Yeah, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. <laughs> we got Vicksburg <laughs> in the Pittsburgh. Uh, the crowd hates this, by the way. They're booing the shit of out of Chris Jericho. I like, I like how they were like Don Callis booing him. Yeah. They I'm enjoying that this. because that might force them to not do whatever thing they're probably going to try to do. But I think Jericho's going to hear that and go, wow, reaction, boo, I'm oh, a yeah. good heel. I'm a great heel. I'm a now. good heel. I'm going ma- to make Hook feud with me for eight months. Yeah, fuck that. Uh, Hook believes in them so much, he says, uh, that he he got them a match on collision. So, like, Jericho's rabble or babbling forever going and, like, on. Hook already hits. And Hook's like, yeah, I got a match ready. Yeah, don't like, worry about it. Yeah, it was, I, I, like on Thursday, dude, I already talked to yeah. Tony. Well, yeah, I got a match. And, and they both are like, we're going to keep an eye on each other. And it's like, all right, whatever. Yeah, I don't understand any of it. No. Uh, backstage, they uh, immediately go to Shane Taylor promotions. I love me some Shane Taylor. Have you watched his, like, no. his ma- <laughs> Do yourself a favor. Yeah. It, where where, where would I see throws, it? It's usually on collision. Yeah. Um, but like my favorite Moxley match in the last like six months, uh, he had an incredible match with Danielson. <clears> Shane <throat> Taylor is just a bad motherfucker. Is he from, that like, guy East that wears Cleveland. like the basketball he's, shorts? He's a big fat guy. He's like shaped like a like a out of shape fat guy, but he hits so goddamn hard. Every one of his strikes looks like that Takeshita strike. Yeah. Uh, he was a Golden Gloves boxer. And like it very much looks that way. Everything, every strike he throws looks like absolutely devastating. Yeah, he's one of those guys. I really would like to see him start winning some matches because he's worth more than what they're using him as right now. Oh, uh, it also sounds like he's believable as hell. Oh, like that's the main thing about yeah. him. When I first saw him, I was like, "Oh, Ring of Honor guy. He's got like a big, weird, fat pear shape." I feel like I've seen. I him. am not interested in him. He was a huge Ring of Honor guy before Tony Khan bought it, but like finally after a couple of years now, I like I watched a few of his matches and like. Every one of them is awesome. Yeah. Again, like uh, Nasty Boys, Harlem, Harlem Heat yeah, kind of stuff. Who to thunk. So lots, of, lots of meat slapping yeah. meat kind of stuff. Uh, they, so these guys, right away, like the Jericho Hook segment ends. It dovetails right into this. These are the two guys fighting Hook and Jericho. Yeah. On collision. So, like, everybody was aware of it except for Jericho. Yeah. Because, like, <laughs> Hook was, like, coming out to talk about the match that they set up. They already had the guys, like, teed up yeah. to do their promo, like, pretty match promo. And Jericho was like, hey can you trust me? And he's like, what the fuck? Are we ever match? <laughs> yeah. Did you see the call sheets? Yeah. Nice, Jericho. I already took care of this stupid. <laughs> uh, uh, and then Shane Taylor, I don't know which one of them's talking because I don't know who they are specifically yet. Shane Taylor's the big giant guy. I don't even, like, I don't know who, who's the other guy? Lee Moriarty. Yeah, I... Uh, married to Julie Hart. Nice. Yeah. Nice. She got married on uh, uh, Friday the 13th of October because they're both huge horror nerds. What a dork. <laughs> uh, one of them goes, Lion Hook. Gets their asses kicked by STP, and I'm like, nope. Motor oil. I don't know, uh, I know that motor oil uh, is. If you're not coming down the ring to Interstate Love Song, I will not <laughs> bite on your STP. <laughs> I can't unhear. You can't call yourself STP. Yeah, no. No. Uh, oh, you come out to Cracker Man? Like, yeah, uh, that no. should be pretty fun, though. Like we, When Hook's in there with like a brutal... Uh, oh, the match will be Stryker. fine. My big takeaway from both of these two segments you is he called it Jericho, STP. Like, the last three matches were good, as much shit as we're getting. Yeah, because he lives in Pittsburgh, and he's our number one yeah, listener. Absolutely. Pittsburgh! Uh, he, and also, incredible match at Fall Brawl 96. <laughs> oh, it was against it was Chris Benoit. So great there. It was amazing. Uh, this match had a little bit of telegraphing, so was it on Collision or Rampage? Because I went back and I watched... It was, on Ram, it was on Rampage. So the Bang Bang Gang goes to Billy Gunn's house. So it's Jay White and and the Ass Boys. And the Ass Boys this wasn't really like a break in because the but Ass Boys just let him in. That's and and they kind of make a joke about that. They're like, <laughs> so Billy Gunn isn't home, uh, and the cameraman says something like, because they're going in, like the the Bang Bang Gang is going into Billy Gunn's house, and the cameraman's like, isn't this illegal? And one of the guns is like, breaking entering is not illegal when you're related. And also, <laughs> Jay White is supposed to be like a super villainous monster. Yeah, uh, it, it just this came off. This whole feud's come off like really corny. 
But like they're trying their hardest to like toughen up. They they do toward uh, the end of the match. The match, I'm, well, I'm gonna have trouble even talking about. Well, this. we'll we'll get to it. <laughs> um, when they get into Billy Gunn's house, beautiful house, there's an AEW program on the television, which I'm like, <laughs> oh, he's just watching himself all the time. Uh, Jay White challenges the acclaim to a trios he match. He's watching like a Emmy soccer uh, like marathon. <laughs> well, he he wasn't home, so. He watched himself, and then he went grocery shopping and (laughs) came back, and that's just what was on. JY challenges the acclaimed to a trios match. They're they're probably going to unify these things at Dynasty. Better. Yeah, they get this fucking out of the way. Better at least do that. Yeah. JY White goes to destroy the TV with a baseball bat, and then Billy Gunn comes up and says, Hey! What are you guys doing in my house? And then they like flee. Hanging out with your sons. The sons should have ran to their childhood bedrooms, which were <laughs> yes, upstairs, uh, just hugging their their uh, wrestling buddies. But yeah, so that that was on Rampage, and now we're at Dynamite, where it is which Jay White led, versus Billy Gunn. Led to, right now, yeah. the uh, in my personal opinion, the worst match I've ever seen since AEW started. This was I, I hated terrible. this so much. I hated everything about it. One thing I did love, one thing, one single thing. Nothing. Because like how the Bang Bang Gang comes out to a blacked out stage and then there's like a spotlight oh, on them. The Jay White int- introduction. J- J- his entrance was great and then Billy Gunn just appears in the yeah, spotlight yeah, yeah, yeah. to start the match. I'm like, that's fucking like, cool. The that- entrance looked cool. But that like... But then I had to watch 60-year-old ass boy. Uh, I'm an ass man. Yeah. F- fucking annihilate the future uh, the, of the company uh, yeah 30 year old uh uh njpw world champion i think two times over yeah uh who is incredible in the ring and he's yeah. an awesome villain uh billy Gunn just get beat pillar to post yeah. got zero offense in was running away the entire time like he like he was a uh, polar bear was after him or something <laughs> uh like it, it was it, it was like a a, a squash uh that yeah like the likes of which you don't even see on wrestling tv anymore right. it was like a prime time monday night uh squash match except yeah. it went for way too long yeah uh and then also it finished with a disqualification which you know my feelings about dqs and AEW matches you get like two a year so make them matter it yeah. didn't matter it was terrible yeah i want billy gunn to retire from goddamn wrestling, he is hurting the company. Yeah, he hurts the tag team that he works with, and every time he gets in the ring in a solo match, though, you know what the last one I remember was when he no sold Darby Allen's coffin drop, uh, oh. and now no, he, he, uh, no, he no, no, no. decided uh, one of the biggest signings that they've had uh, in the history of their company. No, I should just absolutely annihilate him and where he gets zero offense and and my sons have to come in and beg for jay white's life yeah i almost turned the show off and didn't watch the rest of it i've never hated a match uh in aew as much as i've hated i I hated this piece of shit yeah and i I think it's pretty much all billy gun well jay white's got a baseball bat that he uh that's Darby Allen's bat that was given to him by Sting. Yeah. And that's just like a passing comment. Mm-hmm. I'm like, let me get this straight. You just had. Well, she was doing something with that instead of with this big waste of Show me the bat. Space. You just injured Darby Allen yeah. and put him out for a long time. Great storyline right Show there. Show me the bat that you took from Darby that was given to him by Sting. They've even made it gold. Yeah. They've made it they their bat it now. Yeah. Just sh- that's it. Come out every week and sh- hey, we Do beat that. up Darby and took Sting's Dude, fucking. When you're bat. doing your awesome promos, caress it like it's a that's pretty it. lady or whatever. That's like- all they got to do. Wait till Darby's healed. Don't put him on TV until then. And then he comes back and he is gonna get Hulk Hogan 1980s era pops. Yeah, because now we have a fuck you versus a hero like, moment. Uh, Jay White, one of the one of the very few guys that's able to really play a heel that is never going to be too cool. You're never going to cheer for him because he's just a real piece of shit. Yeah. He just seems like the kind of guy that would, like, fuck your wife. Which they haven't. (laughs) (laughs) He is that kind of, like, sleazeball. That's why he went to Billy Gunn's house. Yeah. Uh, like He was trying to get some ass, man. uh, (laughs) What does Billy Gunn bring to this company? Well, what I just mentioned, how and we just agreed that that would be a dope feud. You know who was not a part of that at all? Fucking Billy Gunn. Yeah. Doesn't... he doesn't bring anything to the company. He was there to, I guess, give more face time to the acclaim. But like, I want the acclaim to be a, 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 you know a two they, person they, tag team. They were going to get over anyway because yes. those guys have a lot of charisma, and we would have found something else to chant for them. Yes, because they're awesome. They're great, and they're great. But now workers. we get Billy Gunn, and we put that together and made it a like New Age Outlaws at the end of their career thing. I don't even get to see them wrestle anymore. No, like no. he just he. Yeah. I, I've been saying it for weeks. I never liked his vibe in uh, the acclaimed. He always kind of had a, I'm above it. I'm a WWE guy. I'm above this bullshit. Yeah. 
thing. Like, uh, speaking of vibes, uh, my vibe on Trent. Ooh, I was right about that boy. Yeah, uh, you were. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm uh, gonna, I, as you say, I will uh, be eating my own hat on that one because uh, you, I you are very. You you, side eye in the camera. You were very. Weeks. No, but just hop, we'll, we'll get to it. It's yeah, coming yeah, yeah. up. It's coming I just, up. I don't want to talk about Billy Gunn anymore. So, like, well, there's nothing like. I don't want to say something real mean about him, which is the next thing that I'm going to do. They're going to talk about. So what they're going to, what I hope they do is they give the trios titles to the the Bang Bang Gang, and then I hope that Juice comes back, and then like it doesn't make sense to have them to have trios titles anymore, and then I hope they give it to the fucking who's the guy that does like all the finishers that uh, that I always bitch about. Um, he's got the big dreadlocks. Nick Wayne, Nick Wayne. Huh? <laughs> Nick Wayne, Nick Wayne, Nick, Nick Wayne. Oh, no, no. Uh, Bishop Khan. Yeah, whatever. Fi- the He does all the Attitude Era finishes. Give that group the trios titles sure. or, and, or put them on Defend Ring of on Honor. Rampage. Make it a Rampage exclusive. A Rampage belt. exclusive. Like, just <laughs> yeah. let the tag team division be a fucking tag team What I hope happens again. next is I hope Jay White uh, burns Billy Gunn's house down. <laughs> And he's and Billy Gunn. Nobody's hurt, but Billy Gunn is so distraught oh, that, that he, uh, it, falls into depression and can never wrestle again. And the way Billy Gunn tries to put the fire out is he just crotch chops it from the curb, <laughs> just hoping to get enough wind. And then Not like even crotch chops it because that's cool. He yeah. doesn't even do the crotch chop. He just does the look at my dick. Yeah, he points it like even when he was in DX, he used to piss me off. Like no, cross your hands. Yeah, that's what we all do. D, and we're all the kids are doing this. It's D he always X. This, this. You have to make the this. X. With he your sucks. hands. It's part of it. He sucks. It's DX. You couldn't even beat Kenzo Suzuki. No. Piece of shit. Oh, God. <laughs> God. I need him gone. More yeah. than Jericho, by the way. Way more than Jericho. Je- I need well, Billy Jericho's at least... Jericho's just annoying, uh, but he can be kind of amusing with his nonsense. He's like that guy... Billy Gunn, at this point, I'm like, oh, I hate yeah. you. <laughs> like, yeah. He's getting X-Pac heat. <laughs> yeah. I go away heat big he's time. A, he's like, Jay White and Darby Allen. Talk about two guys that you don't want to, like, put under. For Christ's sake. That has, that has when Rock and Triple H were doing like ladder matches for Intercontinental titles, like Jay White and Darby Allen has that vibe. Like, yeah. This could be. It could be incredible. It could prop up the world title. Like it could be the thing right under that's like better than yeah, the world title the picture. TNT title into like what Gunther did. Good the Lord. Or Just yeah. let these guys fucking cook. Yeah. Get these old tiny get, fucks get, out of get, here. Get, Billy Take Gunn Edge and with HGH you too. I kid. Like, I kid. Get the fuck out of here. Edge can stay. Uh, he likes to stick people in the ass, though, Dave. Yeah. Um, and they get them, and then have some you know, emotional like, like heat, I forget what the line was. Like, ex- exudes some heat. Yeah. That's how people understand that he's walking behind them. I think. Yeah. Uh, oh, he's uh, farting. <laughs> yeah, he's exuding heat. You guys will know what we're talking about. Uh, come Monday. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. That was last week. That, that was, was last week. week's turnbuckle time machine so when we discussed the Great American Bash 2004. Uh, also, another home invasion angle. We have that on WWE with yeah. AJ Styles and LA Knight. Like, could we could fucking not? Swerve did it too. Like uh, right before that. Yeah. Could we? So, and, yeah. and then and then right before that, AJ <laughs> Styles' house got broken into by some. Could yeah. we just not go to where people live? Yeah. It's, like, I, I don't. I they're never not liked, there. I never like that. They're traveling angle. all the time. They had the thing where like Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt burned each other's house down like a million times yeah. too. Like. I never liked it. No. Uh, There's so many mosquitoes probably by that house, too. It's just, it's, it looks like, all the houses look like they're like the model house that you go look at when there's a new subdivision. Yeah. <laughs> never, like, there's never real pictures or yeah. anything. In it. It's just, it's stupid. The next segment, which this made me actually, I'm like, this is actually good. Uh, this was, r- like, r- r- I thought really it was great. Not, not, not what you're going to say. I, uh, the, the Renee thing, but the Bucks and the best friend show up. Oh, I was, no, I was looking at the wrong thing. I wasn't talking about Willow. <laughs> no, that, that's coming up after okay. that. So, so right before the Willow promo, um, they show the young Bucks pulling up <laughs> and they are, they have a driver and they get out of a Maserati. Yeah. Uh, and then they show the best friends pull up. It's Chuck, uh, his mom, Sue, I'm sorry, Trent, his mom, Sue, Orange Cassidy, and Chuck Taylor, and they get out of a Chrysler Pacifica. Of course. So like, it's just, that's neat. But that's Sue's car. She, that's actually been in an angle and stuff. Yes. Yeah. But like a Maserati. I think it was a Wembley. <laughs> yeah. <It> was, <laughs> I just Googled. Uh, I'm pretty sure that was the real glass crying a river. I oh, jeez. It, it was her car. <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah, Maserati. Poor Sue. I love, like, uh, uh, Okada shows up in a different Lamborghini every week, too. Yeah. I just, Love it. Top guy money. <laughs> Up next is the segment you were about to. I so rudely uh, yeah, interjected. So I didn't realize this, but Worcester is evidently, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Willow Nightingale's hometown. Yeah. So she came out with you didn't St- know Stokely and uh, Statlander. I hope they never break this crew up. I think it might be my favorite stable. In it's wrestling. really working. I, they were just great together. Yeah. Uh, but Willow, I, and I meant, you guys remember, I, I mentioned last week, Willow is one of those kind of low key people that never stumbles over a word in a promo. 
Well, she was able to cut like a full, long, impassioned babyface promo here in front of the hometown crowd. Didn't like miss a beat. It was awesome. The place went ape shit for her. She's so, so over. I am with her. Uh, I'm at the point that I don't want her to go after like the TBS. I, she should be in the world title yes. picture. She's like incredible is, at everything. World title is significantly cool. Cooler. Yeah. Than the, no, like it's cooled you know, off. You know what'll heat it up? Willow it's Nightingale. The, one of the most she's over Dusty people Rose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's, everyone just likes her. Right. And it's, it doesn't come off as forced. Like, you know, she doesn't swear. She's gosh and stuff, but she really feels like, a, like girls that I know I've known in my life that just don't like to swear. So they yeah. say stuff like mm-hmm. that. And it's like kind of endearing. Yeah. Cause everything she does is endearing, but she's also not like a pushover. She's able to be like endearing, but also like, because, uh, you know, she sticks to her guns. Yeah. She is a danger to the people that she wrestles. And when she wrestles, she she's lays awesome. it the yeah. fuck in. Like that, she's that, a, the chick with all the, with the chick with the power bomb that once last week, but all of them are like brutal. Yeah. And speaking of pounces, she pounces the hell out of that in women's division. Right. She's awesome. Yeah. I, uh, I had one minor down of this. Because I agree with you up and down. like, And then Stokely comes out and he gives her like Stokely's the endorsement great. of the fuck. And I like, like that he's like kind of like, I know that we didn't really see eye to eye before, he says, but he, like I'm trying to change. Yeah, <laughs> like, he goes, and I'm going to say something uncharacteristic of me. I'm going to say something special about this young lady. Last week, she had what the young kids call a banger. A, a bank, he's, yeah, in his Stokely way. And she knocked it out of the park. I mean, Willow Nightingale again is something special. Week after week after week after week, she impresses me. And not only does she impresses me. Little slip up there. Yeah. Uh, she impresses the entire world. So, like, you got this heel manager, and they're kind of like they're pitch turn, shifting, they're turning them. They're pitch <laughs> like, shifting the entire is, faction because she is she's so, so good. likable and great. Yeah, that that uh, like Stokely's heart grew three sizes that day. Uh, <laughs> also, number two in the faction, I think Willow Nightingale and Chris Atlander are the two most consistent. That's what I was about to say. Yeah, I didn't even think of it until like right now. Yeah, but like that, like in one way at least, they might be the two best wrestlers in the women's division. Yeah, like they are uh, pitch perfect in every match. Yeah, Statlander gives every every single person their best match. Yeah, and Willow Nightingale, uh, like I don't think I've ever seen her have a bad match. And now she's proven time a couple times now. She's really good on the mic. Yeah, and like and and if the goal they're in like this. uh, I'm not saying this to sound sexist. But it's just a, like a numbers thing. Uh, there are not very many female wrestlers in the big two companies that no. are like real, true, great no. mic workers. Willow is that. She's yeah. like, she's like, you know, Osprey, Moxley, whatever, yeah. Cody, like that kind of mic work. Yeah. Like, it's just natural to her. And it's a huge reaction every time. It's super authentic because she's like smiling the whole time. Yeah. Like she's like, how do you not root for she's this? She's a great woman? actor too because she'll yeah. be smiling, but then she'll get some fear in her eyes. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, you're awesome. Uh, <laughs> out comes someone who is not good on the mic after this, <laughs> who uh, Mer- Mercedes Monet comes out. Her music hits. She got a nice uh, pop. It was nothing crazy. Yeah, I like her hair. <laughs> I liked good extensions. I liked her look this week significantly better than I what I've seen her. I definitely liked the hair way more than anything she's done since, yeah. since Sasha Banks. Yeah. It was the best looking hair. Uh, you could tell her and Naomi are friends. She's not going to wrestle till goddamn double or nothing. What are we doing here? They're, That's 51 days from now. They're ruining her. Why would you bring this person in and put her on television when the thing she does yeah. is wrestle spectacularly. Well, she's from Boston. That's I why. I don't care. Well, they... You're destroying her. Like, yes. she's not a good talker. She comes off as kind of aloof. She always did. Yeah. But what offset that was like, oh, it's okay that she's kind of aloof because she is so cool in the ring yeah. that the aloof thing, like, it fits. Yeah. Right now, it feels just like Soraya telling everybody that this is her house and not doing anything else. Tony Schiavone, by the way, or his Excalibur was like, oh, it's uh, we can't even measure the impact Mercedes is based. I'm like, impact? What, a zero? A zero impact? I mean, she's made about as much impact as she would have um, if she went to impact. Yeah, it's yes, been, yeah. It's been like, the They most... probably would have booked her to wrestle a goddamn match. By now, 100%. I wish she would have just stayed in NJPW. I got to see her wrestle matches there. What they should have done... If they knew they were going this way, and clearly Willow Nightingale's winning the TBS title, debut her the night of fucking Dynasty. Yeah, that's it. Because I well, I was uh, like, I hated that, but I I assumed that it was at least what they were gonna do. That's why I said, I like like, hey, how <laughs> do you mean debut? Like ever show up? Yeah, time. never in the company until then. But because like <laughs> as we covered before, like Tony Khan doesn't give a shit about ratings. No. He doesn't give a shit about anything except his personal 
like and action you know figures in Actually, his own sandbox. You know what has gotten him the best ratings? When he does do a big surprise thing, then he sees like a big bump the next yes. several weeks. When he, yeah. If it's not announced, it like, uh, he gets, it, it's much better. Well, for cause him. then people get FOMO. Like, yeah. and like, that's more important than like, yes. oh, I know Sasha that's Banks is coming surprise tonight. surprise matters in wrestling. I know. <laughs> it's like it's universally. <laughs> I was listening actually to uh, when we were doing one of the turnbuckle time machines. I was I popped on like an Eric Bischoff talking about one of my can't remember which one it was, but he said they were going through old when when WCW is like trying to like figure out how to course correct to compete with WWF. They would have focus groups, which by the way was the mistake. Oh yeah, well, I mean we'll be talking nausea about yeah. that. But they would do focus groups where they would watch a show and they would have people literally with dials like, do I like this? Do I love this? Do I not? Like and Peter Venkman, yeah, answer incorrectly, he gets zapped. A couple of wavy <laughs> lines, of like wavy oh, lines. Um, <laughs> and uh, they would unanimously see that people responded to surprises almost more than anything. They're yeah, like, they're awesome. But it's a constant in pro wrestling. But when you Judge, well, I think we we saw the best one of all yeah. time. Um, we were in attendance for uh, Chris Jericho's WWF debut on Monday Night Raw, yes, which we is, were. was it August 9th, nineteen ninety nine. Yeah, generally yeah. considered the greatest uh, debut in pro wrestling history. Yeah. yeah, we were there. We were there. <laughs> it was because we were there. They almost ruined him, and then the subsequent several months. But then he course corrected and was fine. Fun, fun <laughs> comparison yeah. there. Look what they Mercedes. almost did. Yeah. They're doing it to Mercedes now. But don't bring her in. At big business, debut her right after yeah. this this TBS match, and they go, "Hey, bitch, I'm fighting you a dynasty." Then it makes sense that she doesn't wrestle until double or nothing. The only thing that I can even imagine is going on here is that she's just not medically cleared yet. Which don't put her on TV then. Yes, wait until she's medically cleared. She, she's not Kurt Angle. She's she can't wrestler. pull this off. Like, yeah, well, she's not taking ninety Percocet a day. I don't she, think she's <laughs> also like she's not going to put. She's not self deprecating. Like she she's not. Yeah, no, good. It only like that the cocky thing only works. If you're backing it up in the yes. ring, which she could do, but you got to put her in the ring. Absolutely. It was just. I was not super excited no. for Sasha Banks to show up no. so she can do a little dance and talk on the microphone no. a little bit. She sucks because I want to see her do wrestling. Sucks on the mic. She announces that she's getting, like we had mentioned, she's getting a TBS shot, TBS title shot for whoever the champ is at Double or Nothing. So at Dynasty, it's Willow Nightingale against Julia Hart for the TBS title. Dude, her, her song has to go. It has to go. The, all that CEO stuff, it's, I, I it you, sounds I, like a carnival barker. Uh, it's the worst. The, the the Marks actually did the CEO chant a little bit, and I was like, stop it. Don't, yeah. Don't encourage it. We, we, no. I like the song, Everything But the CEO. Get rid oh, of that. Omit that line. Yeah. It's like, and if she's trying to get me to not like her, mission accomplished, man, because <laughs> well, this. There, she, I mean, she's going to have to turn heel now. Yeah. Like, first of all, you're going to put her against Willow. Are you yeah. kidding me? Uh, like the workhorse that everybody absolutely adores. Yeah. Um, maybe that's the idea. Maybe they are like working along. She's not likable. She's I mean, not. She, she's as a face. The great stuff she did in WWE and NXT. She was a heel. Yes. She's a great heel. She's not likable <laughs> yeah. as a, like, I don't want to cheer for her. There's like a, the, you know, what's likable about her. Not for me, but like one, a few times I've showed my daughter wrestling. She's not interested, Yeah, but I showed her Bailey Sasha. Cause I'm yeah. like, oh, I want you to see it's my Greatest favorite women's, women's match of all my time. Favorite women's match ever. Yeah. Uh, and then when Sasha came out, she was like, Oh, I like her. She's got good style. Yeah. That's what she's like likable to a seven year old girl who yeah. likes her the way she dresses. Who can, but, but she you has can a very aloof attitude, which is fine. Yeah. If you're wrestling. She's the, <laughs> I'm the boss. I'm the, by the way, uh, all of a sudden the rankings don't fucking matter in AEW because she's just like, I get a title I, shot. That's the same thing. So I'm I like, go, as of ruining my rankings, if, if she CM Punk's this shit, yeah. it like makes the tunnels go away and makes them start worrying about imagine? the hard cam too much, like Punk oh. did. I, I, yeah, if they try. Mm-hmm. Uh, so mm-hmm. as of March 27th, the the rankings are number five, Serena Deeb, which I would much rather see. Oh, boy, oh, boy. How about uh, you put Serena Deeb first day with Mer- Mercedes? Yes, Monet. and let them have Another a clinic. Five-star match. <laughs> number four, Deanna Parazzo. Three, Willow Nightingale. Two, Mariah May. One, Thunder oh, Rosa. Mariah which May. Thunder, Thunder Rosa looks like she might be losing it a little bit to me. A little bit. Uh, Mariah May, goddamn awesome. Yep. Put a uh, rocket on her ass. Like, her she's very fun. Queen Aminata are, like, basically the same. Yeah. They just hit, beat the shit out of people. They hit harder than anybody else yeah. in the women's division. But they, they addressed, they like... They do headbutts. They're so, awesome. num- right? <laughs> like, also, that, that hip attack? Like, she yeah. does it, and it looks... Both, I, both Mariah and Tony. Queen Aminata oh, yeah. do it. And it's like... I, that's one of those ones that I will never understand how it yeah. doesn't get cussed people every time. I don't. And their heads... Like, you watch their heads, they're like, they're hitting them. I don't get yeah. how this is working. But, uh... So Thunder Rose and Mariah May are fighting for, I guess, the number one contendership yeah. of, but like they both have 
Like there's rankings. There's a one and a two. There's one. There's already a one. Why are we fighting well, for the one? <coughs> I, I'm okay with that. That's something that they've established. And they've this is me being really forever. nitpicky because uh, when there's a one and two that are both like if uh, like if the two is involved in a different feud for a different belt, yeah, then they don't do it. But if both are going for that's a fine. World title, Robert, I'm, I'm very they fine always with that. have that number one contender. Like you said, not. Not sports, sports, perfect, sports like oriented. Sports like look in the right direction. But you know it. what's not sports uh, oriented? When somebody who's never wrestled a match for not the a company, not a single match, just says, uh, "I got next." Yeah. Like, what? No, no, it's not. How about you go win a couple matches? Or like Mariah May. Yeah. Or go. Great. I mean, <laughs> keep doing what you're doing, and then it's, I'm going to want you to go away completely. Yeah. Uh, awesome segment. Um, the one thing I have, I mentioned, I have a little bit of a nitpickiness with, and I, I think WWE does this sometimes too. The AEW does it a lot. I'm getting a little over these promos where they have to tell me their life story about their journey to get to where they're at. It's yeah, I it's always a, found those a little Edge did it at the top of the show. I do think it's Willow's first time and it's her hometown. That's like like I said, it's it's so a like, super low it there. Like, yes, yeah. Like, here it makes like, sense. But like and she's never like mentioned her story before. Not that I could remember at least, but like her character's not like leaning on this where like you go, you go to the other show and you have Becky Lynch who's telling me a fucking like I don't need to know like that you're a mother and yeah, like you're she's a, reading her novel. Like, stop it, <laughs> stop it. I get it. You you have a book that just came out. Like let me read the book. You and every know? time she does it, I'm like, where's Bailey? Yeah, but then like we're watching these throwback shows and like you're not watching like Harlem Heat going out there and telling like you know we were born in Harlem. It's like <laughs> no. I don't give a shit. They're just no, no, like no. we're gonna fuck you up. We are two monstrous scary men. Yeah, we're gonna it's try just... to kill your favorite wrestler. And they, they, and that's <laughs> it. And that's what it should be. Like be the character. Don't I don't want. I don't want yeah. as much as like, they're giving. As much me. as I love them, I never need to hear about Darby Allen's uncle that died in the car accident. It doesn't ever again. No, or like when Punk <laughs> yeah. and Jericho were feuding, and he's like, "Your father was an alcoholic." He's like, "Yeah, but he's straight edge. Yeah. Like he learned his lesson." The, well, the one, I, the one time, and now I'm now I'm a hypocrite because when Punk and MJF did it hardcore, it was like the greatest thing of all time. We got like when it works, we got it, that picture right there out of it. The, but MJF is like where he's like. Talking about his Jewish heritage, and he ties and like, it into real stuff. That yes, happens. like there's evidence on Facebook and pictures of him at autograph signings with CM Punk. Yes, that's why that was so great. And he does it so <laughs> consistently I that miss, he, he's. I miss, I miss He needs to come back. <laughs> I hope he's okay. Yeah. Oh, I mean, he was very badly hurt. Hope, so I no, hope I mean that. As as I hope he's can. okay. Uh, he'll be fine. It was none of it was like super serious. Yeah. Injuries. It was just um, a lot of a lot of. Uh, other kinds of injuries. Yeah. Well, he, I mean, he was carrying the goddamn company. His back for was the broken. Entire year. Yeah. Uh, like he, he would go on, I uh, would like appear on screen and it would be like 884,000 people are watching. And as soon as he went off screen, it would be like 30, 647 yeah. people are not watching. Oh, MJF on TV, 34 million. Even when we were like tired of him, he yeah. was still popping giant ratings because yeah. he was like, he's just that great. He was getting mash finale numbers. I think he's um, going to, when it's all said and done, I think he's going to be my favorite wrestler of all time. He's doing the, he's doing everything right. Right there. He very and rarely makes a miss. Holy shit, we're going to get Will Ospreay MJF someday. <laughs> Did you want some alone time? <laughs> <laughs> I can wait till you leave. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, up next, we had a uh, tag team tournament uh, match. It was the Young Bucks versus uh, Best Friends, being another represented by Chuck Taylor. I'm loving the Young Bucks. No, I'm Bucks. sorry. Trent. Trent and Ocean. <laughs> Trent, yeah. Trent. <laughs> Bucks uh, very look- importantly, Trent. I am uh, I'm really loving the Bucks new in-ring style it's, it's like way more toned he, down like they're just still doing high spots but they're doing like grittier nastier ones yeah like uh, they uh my my first note is the bucks look like bellhops or yeah. <laughs> or they look like civil war recreationists who gave their overcoats to that pretty lady sarah who served them a mint julep. like absolutely yeah, accurate i hate their gear uh, uh they, well that's the whole point is their then mission accomplished dog shit. it looks like that terrible. yellow suits that i love i don't mind the yellow suit it was terrible it's a terrible suit but, but i love terrible clothing like yeah this. but um, their monogrammed ring gear oh yeah it's super it's douchey exactly what a middle no. manager douchebag would do because ceo would yeah. never put that on us uh as they're walking uh, down the ramp to come to the ring, Matthew Jackson, which uh, his the, his new thing he's been doing is like giving direction uh, down the, the camera lens to like other people. Um, and he did that. Uh, something about the production people, uh, music thing, or telling Shivani to promote something. But he also said, uh, big shout out to Scapegoat, Jack Perry. He's killing it over there in Japan. Yeah. Uh, more? That was that's the that's the response that you do to the punk thing, right? Vague, funny. Leave it at that. Right. You don't have to do like my uncle's gonna go out and talk for twenty but, minutes. And, and then on the but on the which if that was all it was, yes, 
on the heels of Edge running for like local comptroller? <laughs> yeah. Like no, no. Yeah, it, like yeah, that it, it semi ruined a cool Matthew Jackson bit. It could have been in <laughs> like, yeah. out. We're winking at it. We're moving yeah. on. That's it. But Edge has to like. Could have been fun. Uh, <laughs> so go. Uh, His heart was in the right place. No, that's fine. For for once, the Bucks actually handled it correctly. Like I, normally, I would shit all over this, but like Edge is getting Edge was the reason I didn't love what they did. So I can't blame the Bucks because yeah, Edge like is took a, it away from. Yeah, it, I, it minimized what the Bucks were doing. Uh, I re- they are I just they're perfect though. Yeah. So I really like that to. they uh, <laughs> Matthew at one point goes on. Uh, the commentary desk, and he puts the headphones on. That's great. And he's and he throws it to picture in he picture. Gets, he, he also gets angry because he's like, oh, I have to do this as well, apparently, because you guys are yeah. like shirking your duties. But yeah, then he's doing like direction. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, go, uh, we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. We're going to picture in picture. The like, only way I thought this could have been better is if he, at one point, like pantomimed that he was looking at a wristwatch. Like he, like <laughs> yeah, he knew yeah. what time it had like to go time, to picture in yeah, picture. Time. Uh, that's the only way I'm like, um, otherwise I'm like, and this, that's I, me being super I, nitpicky. I think my favorite one that they've done is when he grabbed the the camera and was like, Excalibur, don't forget to promote the <laughs> pay-per-view. It's coming up this week. <laughs> and, uh, but this was a close second. Yeah, this I, was, enjoyed it. this is good. This is now I, now that you have so, uh, <laughs> elucidated what you've, you, you've was. explained to me yeah. what the hell they're doing. Now I can actually enjoy it. Uh, at one point, Nicholas removes the top turnbuckle cover, and then Taz is like, "The ref has no idea it's missing." And my, re- what a shitty ref! <laughs> yeah. How do you know? Who was, who, was it? Rick Knox, because he is absolutely a shitty he's ref. One of the bald guys. Like, I don't uh, know. Probably Rick Knox. Yeah. Uh, Rensburg, Rat Fink, but he's a good ref. <laughs> uh, Rick Knox is the guy that like the. Hey, what? It's the Bucks. It's Rick Knox. He's yeah. their stooge. He refs all their matches. Yeah. Like in kayfabe, he's a bad ref. But also, we found out last year that in real life, he's a bad ref because he let John Moxley have a yeah. concussion and wrestle for twenty minutes. Yeah. Uh, and a boy. So he sucks. Yeah, <laughs> he can fun. go. I didn't. Yeah. Ma- Matthew overacts sometimes, where it's like a little like. Uh, oh, he super overacts. No, but like it's, for... it's it's not comfortable sometimes. Like he waved goodbye to Orange Cassidy before he was about to slingshot him into the exposed yeah. turnbuckle, and it just reminded me when. Remember when he had the the shoe covered in tacks and like oh, blood and guts? Yeah. But he like <laughs> he licked the shoe, and I'm like. Dude, less oh, is more here. Oh, he does cringy shit. Less is more. Time. It made me right. super uncomfortable. It's like if he dialed it down ten percent, <laughs> he would be so much better. He actually, ha- I think he has dialed it down a little bit with this character. He, the cheese ball stuff on like being the elite was way over. The- it made me have to be like, nah, uh, come on, man. Uh, come they on. like the melodrama nonsense. Yeah, but like at least for for these characters, a kind of a cringy douchey move. Like at least it fits. <coughs> um, I wrote that. What is DDG? Oh, Orange Cassidy does a DDG on Nick Jackson. Yeah. I I will never not like that move. And I'm yeah, like, how is it not move. a finisher? Yeah, like move. Enzo Amore makes it the DDG. Yeah. Fucking loved it. What it, was it, it said that, uh, they did another uh, like tag team together move that was like super dope too. Talking about uh, best friends. Uh, yeah, they did. Uh, they did I mean, they did Strong Zero. Was uh, yeah, maybe that was it. It was like it was like a uh, um, Dead Eye. Like a dead eye, like a spiked dead eye. Mm. It just looked awesome. Yeah, that's the. I think and like, it wasn't the finish, but they didn't kick out either. It was a break, break up. So, oh, okay. Like, well, they they did your they did strong thing. zero, uh, which I think by itself is just called the crunchy. Yeah. Um, yeah. At one point, <laughs> he goes. So indie. Yeah. Like, the crunchy. Uh, Chuck Taylor goes for a crunchy. I can't sound like an adult <laughs> and say that, but he gets Awful super waffle. kicked, and it gets <laughs> the super kick carries the momentum, and it turns into a code red, which was yeah. dope spot. Um. What else did I have here? Um, they the best friends stop during the match to hug, which is again super indie, but I, I like it. It's yeah, funny. Plus, last time we're ever gonna see it, probably. Yeah. Then when the camera shoots, I'm like, you got to give the people what they want. It, it gets me every time. I did. Uh, you said something many many months ago before we started a podcast that always it popped me very hard. We were talking about how AEW like sometimes misses very big. They're better now, but like a couple years ago, they would they miss like big spots in matches like. Uh, I, you know, a, a big impactful move that would lead to the finish of the match. Yeah. But you're like, yeah, but they never miss the best friends <laughs> doing, <laughs> doing their got to get the people what they want. It's like hundred percent on that over it, four years. Yeah. Like, <laughs> How silly would it be if they were just on the floor <laughs> and like, they just had to quickly cut to catch like the end of it and they missed the camera and you got to have the people. <laughs> ah, shit. <God> <laughs> uh, they did cool spot here where Matt Jackson slides out of the ring, super kicks Chuck Taylor, who is injured for all intents and purposes at this point. And then he goes to super kick Almost, uh, <laughs> uh, Trent's mother, Sue, <laughs> and the crowd 
lost oh, there. Nuts. The, the crowd pop up. This is the biggest spot of the night. <laughs> yeah. the, the the crowd just, it was awesome. It was like a new superstar was debuting. Yeah. That's how loud the crowd Absolutely. was for that. Uh, and then she like kind of whatever she calls a she, slap. Uh, she slapped him uh, only slightly harder than the slap the rock did to Cody on the stage. Yeah, it was it was, <laughs> it was pitiful. Uh, it was like a caress. <laughs> uh, what did I call it? Strong Zero? Storm Zero? Storm Zero. Storm Zero. Uh, <laughs> that almost finished it. Um, Sue Sue at one point gave uh, Trent Beretta a kiss on the cheek and that hulked him right the fuck yeah, up. Which yeah. I'm like, that's kind of funny. I like it. I like when Sue does like a. <laughs> Gives him cookies she baked and it gets yeah. him fired up again. I think that's we're done seeing that now. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> uh, the finish saw Tremperetta going for like what looked like a neutralizer yeah. or like a gotch style pile driver. Um, Matt Jackson catapults him into the exposed turnbuckle. He pulls does it. The, it's one of his big moves, the gotch. Is it a? Oh, is it okay? Yeah. I just saw him reach for it. I'm like, I don't know what you're going for. Um, he uh, Matt Jackson pulls the tights. I said, really fun match. Um, the only the only negative only negative. Because I got a nitpick something in a, in a Young Bucks yeah, match what's besides the their show, stu- man. Yeah, <laughs> it's just the tournament's been a little predictable. And like I, yeah, I, well, I looked at the bracket. The only the, like the 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 upset we were talking about with uh, Captain John Dean and the infantry yeah. is really the only one. All the rest of it, I was like, I can fill this bracket. Yeah, in. like which is fine. I want it to be the Young Bucks and FTR in the yeah. finals. Like good. Yeah. Uh, but also, yeah, but also too, like just and I, I know they gave us one Cinderella. Yeah, at least. Well, they kind of gave us two because I think something went very wrong. Did, was that on this? Was that tonight? Oh, when Ricky Starks, like, yeah, got so somehow injured. I couldn't even tell why, but it was that was on really uh, co- Collision. So Collision had Do another. Do you think they were supposed to win that match? No, because Tony Schiavone. So the match was Ricky Starks and Big Bill versus Top Flight tag team title qualifying uh, match uh, to go on in the tournament. And uh, Ricky Starks ate a pin. And Shivani even pump faked. He's like one, two. Yeah, uh, the ref did the uh, thing where he was three. like, three. Yeah, and like <laughs> every, and then right away, trainers in the ring. Yeah. So like, and I he think, was moving around the way Stone Cold was moving around after Owen. Like, yeah, but I didn't see anything happen that was no. like that. I didn't read any report. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. But it like serious, whatever it was. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that was jarring. Yeah. Like I'm like oh top flight, but I don't mind top flight. Yeah, I and mean like, they're and they they're, like they're they really fun that they're believable too. Like they could have won that match. Sure. Absolutely. So uh, yeah, um, hopefully Ricky's okay. Though. Hopefully Ricky's very okay. Up next, uh, oh oh, I'm not up next uh, after the match. How dare I? The three best friends who are Chuck, Trent, and Orange Cassidy are in the ring. They go for another hug. Three best friends for about five more seconds. They're the three best friends. That, uh, <laughs> Shrimp Beretta just psycho knees the shit out of Orange yeah, Cassidy. And- Really lays it in. Solidifying his goddamn heel turn. Yeah, and uh, I've been saying, look at Brent's subtle acting on these promos. Time. How they did He's it was doing kind of... his little, like, real sly, super quick darting, like, looks to the camera. Like, yeah. oh, I'm fucking tired of these guys. Yeah. Uh, really I, fun. I love the slow burn on this. And Trent's going to be great heel, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's that. I am interested in what he whispered to Lexi Nair, though. Like <laughs> right after she came running, Trent's walking out, and Lexi comes running it down, and she's like, uh, "Or was it? Well, maybe it was um, Renee, uh, one of the two came running down, and we're like, Trent, Trent, uh, your mom was there. How could you do that? Why mm. would you do that with your mother there? Like, uh, she loves those guys." And Trent's like, "I don't want to talk about it." And she just kind of kept, like, "But you, you know, it's your mom." And then he walked up and like whispered something in her yeah. ear, and she was like, oh. "He said I'm going to make you bleed." <laughs> yeah, <that's> very possible. <laughs> yeah. He Renee. Loves his references, so maybe. Yeah. He, uh... Uh, so that's cool. They actually have something to do with the best friends now, which <laughs> I'm very. Uh, Orange oh, yeah. Orange Cassidy. Trent OC is going to be a killer. Feud. It's, it's going to be banging. <laughs> yeah. Also, we have a healed up Trent Beretta for the first time, so yeah. that'll be a brand new like thing we haven't seen in the and they're OG. AEW guys, so yeah. like this is a brand new presentation. Trent has had a wrestling dick face his whole life. Yeah, so like it's, he's gonna be good. Yeah, I mean, I, actually, that was like the one of the very, very, very high parts of the entire episode, if not the highest. Part yeah, of I the mean, episode. like for me, it was yeah, the Willow uh, promo, Trent turning, and then the last segment. Yeah, for the three, fuck top, it, no, they couldn't overcome the fucking Billy Gunn just torpedoing this entire show in my attitude and like my general mood for the yeah. remainder of the day. 
but they tried. Yeah. <laughs> Swerve did his best. Oh, if you're not down with that, they got two words for you. Because <laughs> uh, we're going to live on that for the rest Retire. of our lives. Retire. Uh, number one contenders uh, match for the women's title, as we mentioned before, is Mariah May versus Thunder Rosa. Yeah. I just thought Mariah May is stiff as Yeah, fuck. It's, it was like Mariah May looked... Uh, she looked great. All of the like up-and-coming future yeah. world champ, superstar, super fun to watch. And Rosa looks like the maybe the injuries have caught up with her a little bit. Yeah. That's she's it. getting a little older. Uh, so, yeah, she's not the same wrestler she was when it was, like, uh, the lights out. Which is good, though, because, like, they, they're they doing that. I felt the same way watching her as I'm watching Tiffany Stratton on WWE. I'm like, holy shit, we got something here. Yeah. Like, this is where yeah, this is going. They're doing different. They're, they're like, they rest, They do different styles. Yeah. But both but sentiment as impressive, too, is yeah. in different ways. Tiffany yeah. Stratton doing the, like, gymnastic stuff. Or I may doing the... Uh, I'm a psycho. I'm trying to knock your head off stuff. Yeah. But they're both like awesome to watch. Absolutely. Like, yeah. Looking forward. And like, uh, yeah, it's going to be. Uh, oh, she looks oh, good no. in the Tony Storm gear too. Yes. Oh, <laughs> it, thousand it percent. So uh, as we we're just hyping up Mariah May, uh, she lost. Um, yeah, so yeah. Uh, rolls out. Of, so her finish is called the Mayday. It's just because they're not ready to. Put her there which is yet. fine. Like, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Like they have a nice slow burn thing going. I like, want her and Aminata to have like a best of seven. Yeah. <laughs> like, you can main event every show. I'm surprised Tony Khan and his Uber fandom has not booked a best of seven of any kind yet. Has he? I, uh, wait, am I yeah, wrong? I'm wrong. Trios, as fuck. Uh, the oh, elite and fuck out of here. <laughs> and, fuck out of here. And, and, uh, oh, what was the uh, Escalero de la Muerte, <laughs> which is tables, letters, and chairs? Yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> that was I, awesome. You, you're you're right. I forgot. See, <laughs> these bastards were putting me through hell at that time. I've yeah, it's right. like that's what I'm here for. Just yeah. like Cody, he's talking about all in. You know, yeah. that's that's that's, that's, it. that's what I'm here for. That's good. You're my IV drip of <laughs> AEW knowledge. Uh, you know, all in was not AEW. It okay. was a Ring of Honor you're, you're, slash you're, independent promotion. You're right. <laughs> you're right. Uh, she has a Tijuana bomb. What's the other one? The Tahana bomb. There uh, is there is a Tahana bomb. I that's think. uh, what's her face, Raquel Gonzalez. Rodriguez, whatever they're calling the her, the boring one in WWE. Yeah, who's like out now for it? Like she's back, like yeah, with having health issues. Yeah, she's, yeah. Sick, yeah. But she's still boring. But but here we are. <laughs> um, she uh, yeah, Tahana bomb. Uh, so uh, Dunder Rosa does the Tijuana bomb uh, for the win, and she will be fighting Tony Storm at Dynasty for the Dynasty animation. <laughs> 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 uh, next we had I had to Google what this guy's actual name was because I never had to write it down Alex Abrahantes and Penta <laughs> you don't know Alex Abrahantes? I know I, goofy ass no I know Penta who, says I know who he is but I he's <laughs> that's always a name like where Mickey I'm just Mouse. I'm always just like Alex Abrahantes <laughs> like I never bothered to uh, learn his name so I had to like Google how to write it it's a funny one to say did you say he has Mickey Mouse gloves? he's always got like white Mickey <laughs> Mouse gloves on like, Penta's gonna fight Edge Penta next says, week like, you don't have to tell us, Alex Albert does. I can see what Pence is, like, yeah. saying. I know we speak in Spanish, but no. come on. He's saying he's going to kill that guy. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> and that guy is Edge. Uh, he is challenging Edge to the <laughs> TNT Championship Cope Open. So, I believe that's next week on Dynamite? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Uh, Edge, Edge and Penta, whatever number he had after his name here. I don't remember. Um, in the ring, we had... <laughs> Uno Vieto. That his mask gets stolen. Yeah. I love that so much. He's not Cerro Viedo. No. He's Uno Viedo. Sure. <laughs> I'm different now. That's when he puts the mustache on. He's, he's evil Penta now. That's Penta Oscuro. Oh. <laughs> Although Penta... Oh, the, the evilest Penta that I ever watched was Penta when he just went by Penta and Pentagon Jr. when he was in uh, Lucha Underground when yeah. he broke everybody's arm. Yeah. Oh, that was... Yeah. <laughs> that was I'm, awesome. Yeah. Dude, I tell you what, I never really... like. A couple of those I like looked at. I think I gotta watch. It's great. All of which I didn't watch it really when it was going on, but I've like subsequently gone back and I'm like, oh my god, this is like the most entertaining shit I've ever seen. I gotta give it a peek. I think they do like murders. They do like yeah. mob <laughs> killings. I'm not exaggerating or anything. No, I don't. Like, I the guy you. that runs it sits in a big throne. Yeah. He's like a mob boss, and he has people killed. He has like oh. all the wrestlers killed. Oh, and then you got like Mil Huertas, a big giant muscly scary dude, yeah. and like Swerve Strickland under a mask doing like death matches. It's great. Well, I guess it's better than what some guys who own a company do to their staff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. What's Yeah, I'd rather take a light to that. Since the last segment is the final segment on the show, what would you call this? I would say that this is probably the main event of the evening. And it is not an actual fight. It is a contract signing in the ring. Uh, and Samoa Joe. Normally, and I can't fucking stand contract signings. They always end in this. Sh- 
was a different this animal, is fun. though. This <laughs> is fun. Uh, world title contract signing between Samoa Joe and Swerve. Um, and Joe cooks his fucking ass on he the mic. He did it first. Yeah. But then two weeks in a row, we get our, I got what I asked for from Swerve. Step up and show me that you're the man. Yeah. He's the fucking man. <laughs> but yeah, Joe murdered him. He right? said, oh, well, let me talk to you, like, because uh, I know you're a rapper. Uh, oh, I- after, the, after this match, you're going to be emotionally damaged, like as if you stayed at Diddy's party too long. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Uh, cooked him. Um, Swerve did the thing that I didn't like right after. He's like, I wanted this, wanted this moment all my life. I'm like, dude. Yeah. And like, while he's giving this impassioned story, <laughs> the crowd's chanting very loudly, Joe's going to kill you. But the way that, like, I thought that it played out well because that was kind of bullshit and disingenuous. And then we, we got a glimpse. We were reminded who Swerve really is at the mm. end of this. Oh, it's so getting there. Fucking psycho. Yeah, we're, we're right? getting there. All this, like, I'm here for the fans. I, I've he's... been working my whole life. That's all a front. He's a fucking maniac. Well, that's why it was in the front of the <laughs> yeah, promo. He, yeah. he backloaded it. I, he... did, I like that they, like, I didn't even realize, really, that that's really what they've been doing with him. No, they like, haven't. That, it's simmering underneath. Yeah. No. He has, no, he's had the psycho thing. For a year. Yeah, like, but they haven't been doing that lately. Like, we can... Texas death. And, and, that, uh, no, that's not that's not what I mean. Like, F, the program since he's been in with Samoa Joe, he has not well, been... Okay, I should I, I put it incorrectly. They haven't teased it out enough, but... Uh, At the all. Fact that they recognize, it went away after the, Texas death. The fact death that they recognize that it's, like, underneath it... Because Swerve has sat it a few times. Yeah. But, he, but uh, the fact that that has been, like, a thing that's, like... Flowing yeah. under, and now we get to see it come out right before slime! the pay per view. There's a river of slime. This is a dope. Um, <laughs> I, and I'm I'm not saying it negatively that they haven't done it. Again, this is rewarding wrestling fans where it hasn't been in any promo or any part of his character since the Texas Death Match. They don't fucking bring it up at all until right here. It's like, oh right, and now we could have that like, <laughs> holy shit, that is still there. Yeah, kind they of didn't thing. lean too hard into the I gotta be a baby face. Which is no. fine. They course corrected, but like they knew they had like, hey, we can always go back to this honey hole of him being a psychopath. See, Cody just admitted that they did have to pivot. It's the first time anybody any said anything about it. He's just honest about everything. It was in Off. some interview. I think the El Hawani post yeah. punk interview. He's like Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that was a pivot. We had to change everything. Of course they did. <laughs> yeah, but they wouldn't. They weren't. Nobody was saying. Yeah. It. Uh, I love Cody. Yeah, I Cody's great. Uh, Swerve then says, uh, "We're building a dynasty with signings like Okada, Mercedes, Osprey, and then a very loud MJF chance." Yeah. <laughs> Which I'm like, yeah, that's your guy. Yeah. Like, let's not like, yeah, it's nice we got these new guys here, I love but all like, guys, but MJF is MJF like the is social package. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Nothing will make wrestling as good as MJF. I can't wait for that. First. When that note hits, I'm gonna oh my god, shit my pants. Yeah, well, it is kind of like a brown note. I hope so. it is at all in, um, but I also hope it happens like this week. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. So wherever it goes, I understand the dangers of facing you, Joe, for it, the world title. Everything about your title reign up until this point has been dangerous. You are the definition of a killer, but so am I. Dynasty, I show you I am every bit of that man. I grabbed the keys to the dynasty and turned AEW into whose house? Whose house? That really is. Now one run of the, the call and response. Now run the fade way. on that, bitch. And, oh, and then Swerve chokes Joe with a chain. Yes. But <laughs> Joe, then Joe's neck is too fat. Yeah. <laughs> really, to, to finish, like Swerve said, he was worried that his neck was too fat. Yeah. And it kind of turned out to be too yeah. fat. <laughs> Even too much for a chain. <clears throat> Joe takes said chain. Balls it up in his fist and he punches Swerve with it and then he rabbit punches him in the back of the head yeah. with it. Blading, and then Swerve blades. Blading all over the big place. old bloody, <laughs> big old bloody Swerve face. Um, Swerve pops up and says, I love this shit. Yeah, this is where Swerve goes from cheesy to I now I believe yes. what he's saying. That's great. Because it was like, all right, I'm taking the mask off. You don't understand, man. I, I love this shit. And it says, if that's <laughs> all like, you oh, yeah. if that's all you got, then I'm taking your championship from you. He takes his ballpoint pen. Wipes it in the blood on his forehead, and he signs the contract in blood. Signs it in blood. To the uh, crowd chanting, chanting, you sick fuck. Yeah. Um, and Joe uh, looking, like, jarred. And it's the first time I've seen Joe, like, on his show heels a, a little glimpse bit. of, like, fear. Yeah. Uh, it was didn't, dope. Didn't last, but, like, no, Joe's he, so great. He ran right back he to the ring. He flash happen, though. Yeah. It was like, oh, that's great. Joe's great. And then he snaps <laughs> out of it, runs back to the ring, does a Uranagi through the table. But yeah. still, like, he's got him He's got him on his heels a little bit. It would be. Like, you just, I just beat the shit out of you, left you bleeding, and you were, like, giggling about it, and you yeah. just signed the contract that you're blood. In your own blood. goddamn blood. <laughs> yeah, it was very cool. It was good. Uh, it was a show. 
Well, the, yeah. Some like really. That, that, I thought that segment was awesome. Some really nice highs. None of it. Even Willow. That's uh, um, the Bucks match was great. The turn was great. It doesn't matter. Like unless we got to you know to catch the Osprey too. Yeah. Nothing was gonna Billy, get me out of the bad mood I was in because of Billy fucking Gunn. Billy Gunn was the hole in the boat. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He really was. I could I could not get back into a good mood after that. No, I'm like I I, I couldn't believe what I was watching when yeah. I, that match was happening. It was bad. I started like going to do work outside. I like, <laughs> didn't want to like have my eyes. You were on building a war anymore. games cage. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I started that immediately after we discussed it. <laughs> Tune in this Monday to uh, Turnbuckle Time Machine to understand that reference at all. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, since this show is over, uh, tune in right now to uh, the uh, WWE portion of this because we're going to do our WrestleMania 40 preview slash uh, predictions show. Should be a lot of fun. Going to be a great time. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, hope you come back again next week, everybody. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.